Hello, hello, good afternoon or good evening everybody. Welcome to another live stream with me, 320 Simpilots. And today we are taking the mighty BAE 146 for a flight from Glasgow, which is where we're starting obviously, down to Jersey. And we're going to be using this fantastic Flybe British European livery, um, which is what the last one they would have had on this before they finally retired the, uh, the 146-300. This is an upcoming release from Just Flight for X-Plane 11, so thank you to Just Flight for sending over a preview copy. But the result is there could be some bugs. It's it's not the final, final version. It's getting updates all the time. So uh, yeah, even the version I have now is probably, probably already out of date slightly, but I have tried to keep it as up to date as possible. And yeah, we're going to see see what it's all about, see the differences of this airplane, and uh, we'll have a go at looking at some of the, the, the funky systems it has. Really interesting design. And we'll talk a bit about how this design came about. And I can answer your questions on the product or the, the you know, the, the 146 if you're interested. I know it's not going to be for everyone, but uh, yeah, nice to have it in X-Plane 11. Really, really detailed systems on this machine. You know, it's, it's got a lot. Um, so we'll talk about that as we go through. So thank you all for taking the time to come along. Sorry we started five minutes late. That's uh, unusual. I try to keep us bang on the, uh, the time I say, but sadly didn't quite manage that today. Let me get the overlay set up. So that is there to Jersey. And we are going to be the Jersey 271. Uh, Glasgow and Jersey were both commercial bases for Flybe when they were open. So it's nice to be here. Um, and yeah, I, I'm glad we finally got this livery back in the sky. <laughs> uh, we haven't had this on the channel. We've had the Jersey European, fantastic version by um, Paddy. Or was it British European? I can't remember which. I think that was Jersey European on the CRJ, which they also had. Um, but there we go. So Danny Robel, thanks for coming along. Kai, good to see you. Kai says, oh, I love the 146. It's a lovely aircraft. Looks so uh good with its four engines it's like what the 747 could have been as a regional yeah there you go it, it pretty much is yeah it's really unusual really it looks in a way it reminds me of a sort of a heavy lift cargo airplane like a c5 or something like that just shrunk down and filled with passengers um dave geimer good to see you johannes b i hope you're doing well alex nightingale good to see you as well agent cold 2000 chick point marcel good to see you thanks for coming along lauren v lauren v says i almost forgot there was a stream today wonder what happens first land the 321 xlr after 10 hour overnight long haul or 320 pilot can get a 146 taken off <laughs> i guarantee you'll have landed before i uh, get to the takeoff no doubt there this is going to take a, a bit of effort um I am, you know, it, this is a, a, this takes a bit of study, this airplane, I've got to say, it, it's really quite, quite funky. Um, so we'll get through it. Matteo Chewy, thanks for coming along and moderating. I hope you're doing well. Doc Retro, Isaac, uh, Rasmus, John Padfield, Baker Warrior, Wild Womble, Aviation Fan YouTube, Van Raj, Paddy, good to see you, Paddy. Thanks for coming. Aviation Fan YouTube, hello to you. Uh, Ready Meals says, buying this plane on release day. There you go. So a few people are definitely excited for this one. Victor Tango, thanks for coming and moderating as well. Duncan says, were they also called the Whisper Jet at some point? Yes, that was the code that, or not the code, the, the tagline that they used at uh, um, uh, British Aerospace to try and sell this airplane. And it was very quiet. It's pretty much the quietest jet for its um, sort of size and what it was used for. And there were lots of reasons for that. We'll talk about that. Wait, is Flybe back, says Delta? Well, Flybe, uh, I've seen a little bit of news about that. Maybe the, the brand seems to be bought up by somebody. So we'll see if that turns into an airline. That'd be amazing. Andy H1302, thanks for coming. Lizzo5 as well, thanks for coming to moderate. Birdman says, you're five minutes late. What do you call this? Yeah, I know. I do apologize. Even less chance of getting airborne in our half an hour now. <laughs> um, Simon Smith, good to see you. Thanks for coming. And uh, Chris47, Chris says... Uh, Evening all. Ha happen to have a small model of this exact same plane with the same livery. It would be interesting to see it there. There you go. Excellent. Seems to have been a part of people's history. Okay, the first officer is already joining us. Hello. Unusually quick for the first officer. Are you going to say hello to everyone? Are you going to say hello? Nope. Nope. Total silence. Let's try once more. There we go. <laughs> There we go. Right, so the first officer is going to help us get this airplane set up. Uh, oh no, she might be thinking of leaving already. She maybe is, is concerned about the difficulty we're going to face here. Uh, Brian says, new making stream, going to love it. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> um, it's a bit later. It's about uh, six o'clock where I am in the in the UK. C-Mac says, x 5 bq 400 pilot here. Looking forward to the stream. Oh, thanks for coming along, C-Mac. I, uh, I hope you've got yourself some other flying. And if you haven't, hopefully you do soon. But yeah, fantastic. Yeah, this, uh, this was obviously phased out by Flybe in favor of the more efficient turboprop. But this version, this is the 146-300, which is the most stretched version, could take uh, almost 100 passengers. So yeah, there you go. Uh, Simon says, don't know pretty much anything about this plane, so this is going to be fun for sure. Excellent. Uh, right. Okay. I've, I'm, I'm running very late. Kai says, also on X-Pilot 320 Simpilot, you're departing from EGPH apparently. Oh, have I done that? Yeah. I've, <laughs> we haven't streamed for a week and it's all gone wrong. I, I, I've been terrible at setting this up. So let me just refile that flight plan. Uh, EGPF, EGPF. 
save that one in and file that one. There we go. Thanks for that one. Good spots. Um, right. American Airlines tagged their 727s with WhisperJet name two for some odd reason. Yeah, exactly. It's a good piece of marketing. Um, Mark says, flew on this two, uh, twice a week to Munich every week with work. Have they modeled the weird wing root rush of air when the flaps came in? Absolutely, they have. You're going to hear that noise. I'll turn up the sound a little bit for today's stream, actually. You guys let me know if the desktop audio is too loud. Um, but when we get it powered up, hopefully you'll see. Uh, but you might find our traffic control is pretty loud. Uh, so there you go. Yeah, thanks, uh, Ready Mills. We've just, uh, I've just refiled it. Yeah, that was, uh, that was my mistake. There's always something wrong. The manual from Just Flight is quite large, as Warren Smith. It is indeed. Um, the manual is already available. So you can pretty much find out a lot of information about this if you do that. Ryan Video says, hey, the Flyby delivery looks amazing on the one on the British Aerospace plane. Yeah, it does. Giuseppe's Gaming says, going to enjoy this one. My father used to captain the 146 when he flew from Ridiana. Excellent, Giuseppe. Yeah, brilliant. Right, well, enough uh, of that. Thank you all, and, and apologies if I've missed you. Um, but yeah, we're going to go and uh, give it a go. Lauren V says, there's top of descent clock in on uh, 320 Sim Pilot for 30 minutes. No chance. <laughs> no chance. So this aeroplane, relatively well equipped for what it did. Um, it's pretty much the most uh, conventional regional jet used in a lot of the airports. So it's got you know proper uh, anti-icing with a heated wing. It doesn't use boots like a lot of turboprops of the similar size. It's got proper jet performance, which is great. It could go up but very pretty high. It could pressurize. Not the fastest or highest jet though, by any means. Um, it also had uh, some other advantages such as this nice trading link landing gear, which I talked about in my videos. This is known, pilots love it because the way this gear if I can show you, the way this gear softens landings is just amazing. Um, it's because, oh, there's no way for me to do it like this, uh, it's because it's behind the pivot point, so you can't really see it here. I don't know how I managed my video, but there we go. Um, so yeah, anyway, the way this compresses and bends is much nicer, much more forgiving for landings. Uh, you've got these four engines, um, which are relatively low power each, of course, but they are perfectly perfectly suitable for what uh, what they were needed for and they were designed to be pretty robust pretty quiet so they, they they do work well they had a geared turbofan not something we've seen much of the neos now use a geared turbofan um or geared fan at the front so that's what they had to help the tips not be supersonic which kept it a bit quieter i told you they'd be well there are always wikipedia facts we know that um so there we go so let's jump into the cockpits um, this is all modeled so you've got a full cabin um i'm zooming around too fast here really to to do it properly uh, justice ah there it is i know it's got the speed bird uh, tick on it but there is a full cabin and uh, i did have some wing views but we're gonna have to we're gonna have to find those ourselves later when we come to it right let us uh have a look around so usual sort of explain stuff you can click the yokes out of the way if you don't want them of course we don't want them um you'll notice the fuel levers like the crj are in cut off so they're actually properly off they're not uh, they're not anywhere um there's no other fuel off switches on this airplane. So it's a bit of a, a bit of an unusual design. Takis says, hello, Captain. Have a nice flight. Greetings from the island of Creta, Greece. Exactly. Uh, sorry, Crete. Uh, thanks, Takis. Thanks for coming along. And I hope you're doing well. Rasmus says, rear door open without any stairs. Hope you no one falls out. Yeah, it's only got air stairs at the front, of course. Harry says, those gears clearly didn't soften the famous Swiss uh, 146 London City landing. No, no. Although I can't imagine what that would have done if it was uh, any other sort of gear. Uh, Victor Sango says, do you have any idea why that design for the landing gear has not been adopted by other manufacturers? It's a bit of an unusual one. It's not um, It's not going to be for everyone. It, it, it's quite chunky. So it takes up quite a lot of space. Why exactly Airbus don't use it? No, I don't know. The Airbus one is pretty good. The Dash 8 one, um, which was a, a completely vertical, if we ever see a Dash 8 in x plane or a, 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 you know, a more advanced one, I'll show you. It had a completely vertical uh, strut. And the problem with that was when you landed, that wouldn't compress instantly. So you'd basically be landing on rigid landing gear and then it would compress as the spoilers came up. So um, yeah, why why this trading design isn't used, I don't know. Even on light aircraft, um, it, it is nicer to have trading landing gear. Every, every pilot loves it. So this is a bit more stretched than the one I've been using in the videos, but here we go. Right, now I am sorry. I thought I had a checklist ready and I, it turns out I don't. So, But what we do have in here is an included checklist. So you might have to watch me struggle through this. So this little menu, you can see you just pop it out with this tab here. Um, and over here, you've got, I can click this and it will instantly turn on all the engines and be powered up. So that's quite a nice feature. Uh, we've got the uh, flight computer. I've never used that. We've got this to close the doors. Let's close the R passenger and the cargo door um, and we'll leave it as it is. Uh, we'll start up the APU so we won't use the GPU. Bring up the autopilot change the TCAS around, we'll use the basic TCAS thrust management system, talk about that in a bit. So let's do flight safety, um, gears down, radars off. I'm going to just imagine a lot of these things are in the right place because it is uh, set up like that. Flaps are up, nav lights can come 
on. So nav lights are over here, so they'll be on as soon as we power up, I imagine. So let's put them to high intensity as it's daylight. They won't come on yet, of course. Batteries come on and we'll check them. So battery one, battery two, and you'll hear loads of great sounds. This is one of the best sounds that I've seen in an add-on for a long time. I'm really impressed with it. Um, so uh, yeah, pretty happy with that. So you hear a few things spool up and up here we can check the voltage. So there you go. We've got 25 volts in battery one and battery two. This is the most amazing little dial I've ever seen because it is anti-clockwise scrolling up. I mean, have you ever seen anything like that? And so is this one. I mean, just brilliant. <laughs> so there's some really wacky little things in here. Anyway, the so batteries are on a checked. Gear should be down and three greens. There's the three greens. Brakes yellow and parked, so you can set it to two different systems. It's on the yellow and it's pulled, so it's parked. Master switch is on. They're all up here. Uh, weird to have to do this, but there we go. Your damper master switch is on. Autopilot master switch and the avionics okay. master switches. Let me just change frequency on there. That may be quite loud for you guys. So you let me know how it goes. Adam, Adam Story, good to see you. Adam says, hi, Captain. I must excuse myself from watching your latest stream. I had my second COVID jab yesterday, but I have sadly had a reaction to it. I've been feeling unwell all day with nausea and fatigue. Oh, dear, Adam, I hope you get better soon. I hope the COVID jab does its job for you. And uh, yeah, thanks for coming along. And no problem at all. Catch up whenever whenever you feel like. And I hope you get better soon. Um, but good to see you, Adam. Thanks for coming along to, to say hi. Um, yeah, we could just use the Airbus flow. Yeah, I, I, I thought I had like a... A condensed checklist but we've got the, we're going to do the full one today um we'll just have to think through it <laughs> and just getting the list what is on um so that is also hidden up here this is sort of our hydraulic panel so the brake fans are on auto anti-skid is on and the uh, auto spoilers i'm gonna uh, that's enough actually where's the lift spoilers gone there they are put those on good bus ties to auto you guys are gonna watch me struggle my way through this uh so electrical bus ties can go to auto Standby inverter arm and check. So that's those two standby generator arms. So they're ready in case of an emergency. Um, you'll notice these ones have three positions with the dots. The rest are just two position rocker switches. Incredibly hard to tell which way they are. Uh, gens one and four off and check. So they are on uh, down here, off. So generator one and four, that's where our electrical generators are and the middle two engines don't seem to have generators on them. APU gen on, so we'll turn on the APU generator before we actually start it, so that comes on. Again, three positions, so make sure it goes all the way forward to on. Fire handles in, they are up here, all four. Uh, and we can test all those up here uh, if you want to have fun. Load speed warning, stall warnings, <laughs> APU fire. It's brilliant. You have so many tests you can do. Absolutely great. Anyway, uh, ground test complete. External AC, AC, that's electricity. We don't want that. APU on if required. It is required. One of the easiest APU startups I've ever seen. Big fan of this. One button. Start, please. There it goes. Now, you will see APU fuel low pressure. That's because I haven't turned on the left inner fuel pump. I think that's the right one. You need to turn that on. A bit like 737. Um, so when that, is up, when that is up and running, that should clear that. If it doesn't, it's one of the other pumps. <laughs> Uh, but I'm trying to trying to work it out. Good evening, Hayden J. Robbins. Thanks for coming along. John says, not much of a cargo hold for all us poor folks to come into. No, sorry, there's, um, goodness me, yeah, there's uh, only 100 seats on this one. Uh, right, there you go. Low fuel pressure's gone out. The APU is running at 100% RPM, a very efficient APU. Compared to other airplanes, it burns, I think, um, half or a third of the fuel. Very efficient uh, by its day, anyway. This is quite an old airplane, talking 1980s. So APU on, master warning system. Oh, and by the way, of course, now that that's on, uh, we've already turned the APU generator on, so we can just check that uh, the, the load is being taken by the, the APU generator. Um, so I think if we go here, you can see... Oh, I'm not sure what that's trying to show us. Again, a lot of strange, strange choices. Um, but anyway, we'll work our way through it. Master test, check it all works. Um, and that's the enunciators. There is a way to put it as well. But... Um, Mm, not getting that right. The cabin emergency lights arm. It's all the cabin lights are over on the right hand side of the overhead panel. I don't know why I'm doing it like this. I do actually have a hotkey for this. Uh, so the emergency lights, where are the emergency lights? I feel like they're lower down. There's fastened seat belts. Weirdly, the fastened seat belts are put in quite a convenient place right down at the front, whereas the rest of the lights are all hidden up here. Emergency lights, emergency lights. Put no smoking on. Cabin emergency are in arm. There you go. They're in that middle position. Air conditioning as required. So. Um, these days, we want to get ventilation going, so we'll put on the APU air, and I'll turn on the packs. We'll have to turn those off for engine start. We'll have cabin air to fresh. Why not? Ram air open. I don't know what they would normally do. DC pump test. Well, we're not going to worry about that. So AC pump and PTU on and checked. Uh, right. Up here, then. Uh, that is talking about the hydraulic pump. So AC pump should be 
on and checked. So what we do is we check we actually pressurize the system. Then I'm going to run the PTU and check that that system can pressurize the other system, which is all working. And you can actually hear it revving. Yeah, so it does make some interesting, uh, interesting noises. So if you load up this airplane, sometimes you'll sit there with this sort of noise. <laughs> Thrust levers config checked and off. So they're back there and off. I'm not sure what config means. Now we can turn the AC pump and PTU off. So that can go off. And I'll put the AC pump to off. Continuous ignition off. Where is continuous ignition gone? Ah, I knew I was going to forget something. It must be down here. There it is. That's the continuous ignition switches. They are off. And anti ice for some reason has to be on for engine start. Don't ask me why, but that comes on. Heaters are off. Wing tail ice protection off. Engine air is off. So that is over here. All the engine air is off. Flight deck emergency lights arm. Um, flight deck emergency lights. Come on, you can do it. We're doing so well to get this far. I'm really pleased. Flight deck emergency lights up here. Cabin emergency. Put the logo lights on. Let's just have all the lights on, obviously. We like our lights. Oh, no, not the beacon strobes. Never on high. Flight deck fan. Cabin fan. Ah, uh, we finally run out of uh, luck, I think. I think it looks like guarded switches. Ice detection, for example, is guarded and on. Anyway, we'll leave that off. Control handles disconnect in. That is an unusual system. You don't see that on the 320, obviously. These are the control. You see these in Dash 8 as well. Basically, if there's a problem, for example, one of the yokes is jammed and you're not able to move it freely, it could be jamming the other one that might otherwise move. So you can pull that to disconnect and take control from it. Your damper's both on. You press this little switch here. Your dampers are both on. Autopilot off. That would be that switch. That is off. Fantastic. Right, so we're already up to the before start. See, it's not taking too long, guys, and there's no FMC to do on this one. So look at that, 12 minutes in, and we're getting there. So from the outside now, starting to look and sound like a, a more ready-to-go aeroplane. The passengers are boarding. Um, Lauren V says, the APU was so efficient because it was meant to operate to places that didn't necessarily have ground power available. Yeah, exactly, so they, they needed to be able to use it. It also doesn't need a big APU for pressurization because it doesn't start the engines using the APU. It, it uses electricity. Um, so yeah, it's, it's slightly different for that. Warren says, reckon this is getting released for the end of the month payday. Don't tell the wife. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I think they're hoping, um, I, I, I don't know if I'm supposed to say this or not. I think they're hoping um, sort of uh, mid to late next week, but I don't know if that's still the case. So yeah, uh, sounds like a tree source says Danny Robo. There you go, there's some interesting noises. Ryan Video says, ATC just announced the runway change in 15 minutes from 23 to 05 on the normal one, Juliet. Just a heads up in case you already have filed your flight plan. Thank you very much, Ryan Videos. So expecting runway 05. We'll grab an ATIS sh shortly. We're going to have to do VOR to VOR navigation. We'll talk about why in a second. Anthony says, hello. Hello, Anthony. Thanks for coming. Airbuses for X-Plane are finally on sale. Brilliant. So for those of you who haven't yet got the Airbuses on X-Plane, they now they're all, all available on sale. That's good to know. It's far left of the seatbelt switch, says Doc Retro. Doc Retro coming in with the uh, <laughs> the serious knowledge there. That's excellent. Oh, here it is. Flight Commercial Lights. Off. Arm. On. So let's go to arm. Brilliant one. Thank you. Um, Airbus has Cystic Override, of course. Yeah, absolutely. I don't really know. That's a good point. C-Max says, fun fact, the roll pitch disconnect handles on the dash are 60 kilograms of force. Yeah, there you go. That's a good one. Um, I don't know how, how much these would be. They look a bit smaller, I feel. The Dash ones were uh, yellow and black, weren't they, on the, the, the Q400? I remember the Dash as well. It's manual gear extension. had a cable you could pull down from, I think it was over the first officer's seat. Uh, you had to pull it down to help. I think that opened the gear doors or some of the landing gear on, on the gravity extension of the landing gear. And it was so stiff on the, the, the real aircraft that when it's had to be used for real, I remember hearing the story that one pilot had to actually put their entire body weight like hanging off the handle before it came down. <laughs> Um, so there you go. That's one, one little knowledge thing from the dash that I remember anyway. Um, Mike says, when you use the tiller override in the 321, is it a switch or a button? Uh, it's a big clicking button. It feels like a mechanical button for the tiller override, yeah. The CDU is not yet complete. Sadly, we get the default FMS. They are working, and I believe it's within a couple of months is the plan after release, and it'll be free of charge, and you'll get the full custom FMC. This airplane was designed uh, with VOR navigation in mind, hence big prominence to the radio navigation. Look, VOR up here, there's VOR2. Uh, the, the autopilot modes are a bit basic for comparison. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a bit of an interesting one. Let's put on the radios. Um, but uh, anyway, yeah, so for now it doesn't have it. So it's a bit like the 737-200 or you can put the route in here, um, which I may actually do. I may do that in a second. I, I don't really use a default one. We're not, not going to need it today, but it's just an option. Um, but there you go. Danny Robles says, I meant the test at the beginning at the overhead panel. And <laughs> only that sounded like a tree. So, oh, there you go. Yeah, very good. Lauren V is going to have to go stare on cockpit. Enjoy, Lauren. Enjoy your approach. C-Max says, firm yellow and back. Manual gear extension is under the FO seats. Oh, there you go. Yeah. I, I, I don't remember it. 
uh, Burban, thanks very much. Yeah, if you're enjoying it, do please hit the like button. Um, so yeah, so this is this is hopefully coming out. Uh, yeah, I think late late this week is the current plan, but no guarantees on that, uh, guys. Um, right, where were we? Checklists. We were doing checklists, weren't we? So safety exterior checks complete. Brakes yellow park and press and temp. We can check the brake temperatures. You see what I mean? No, none of this on regional turbo props usually, but this is a fancy one. So we flick this on, and then we can see all the brakes: outer, inner, outer, inner. And then max 22 degrees so you just leave it on max it'll show you the hottest break thrust levers are in the fuel off position hydraulics need to all be off uh, which they are off dc pump is off see how that that is off this one needs to be in the middle to be off this one in the middle to be off this one there to be off i mean <laughs> just brilliant fuel checked and set so how do we load the fuel on this airplane brilliant here we go right uh, so i can swap this to avi tab and I should have done this already. There it is. We need 9.2. That is quite a lot of fuel. You can see why they ended up swapping to uh, Dash 8. <laughs> 9.2 tons of fuel. A Dash 8 could get from sort of Glasgow down to Southampton and back up again with about 4 tons of fuel. So I don't know how. <laughs> I mean, this is a bit further, but obviously, but still 9.2. Um, so let us load that on. Uh, I'm going to cheat as ever. I don't trust this entirely. So I'm going to go for... Uh, let's go for... I don't know how much we can get into the side of wing tanks. There we go. Hmm, not much. We're going to load it up. That's it. Is that what we're allowed? Well, that's a bit concerning. Aft, aft, kilograms. Have I misread the... I never never bothered to check that. Have I done the right aeroplane? It does seem like an awful lot of fuel. Flight time exceeds aircraft range. Yeah. It doesn't think it can do it. I don't believe you can't fly this in a, a CIJ. Hold on, let me just check what I've done there. I can't believe I got this far through the process without realising. There's no way. B463. That's not the right code. That is not the right code. Let me edit this flight. Hold on. What have we done here? The A463. It doesn't think we can do it. I can't believe it. Um, and I don't know why it's got us cruising so low. Uh, all right, um, that's an interesting one. We're going to top up the fuel as we go if we have to do that. I can't believe that's the case. Um, too early to start the excuse machine. Well, here's the excuse. We haven't got enough, can't fit enough fuel. Yeah, I was going to say the extra minus 306. Made for maximum confusion. We'll see what happens. Yeah, it is the correct plane. Yeah, I, I can't believe that. This plane must have flown for more than 1 out of 20. I guess maybe not. But this was used in Australia. You can't get between two villages in Australia in an hour and 20. I think the problem is this flight level. For some reason, it's got us stuck at 210, and this plane is, is more than capable of going higher than that. Um, so anyway, we're going to go with maximum fuel then and hope we have the performance to get in the air. Don't look at this flight plan. Um, I'm not going to go 21. Let's go. Let's see if we can get up to 310. They do include all the performance charts, um, and I just haven't read it. So that is entirely my fault. Uh, yeah, that would also explain why they would stop using it. <laughs> what a ridiculous number. I mean... Actually, what we also need to do I'm so sorry guys I normally check all this stuff very carefully uh, and that's with 23 passengers let's just I was going to take 100 passengers let's lower that a bit let's take 50 passengers they can't, they're not allowed any bags because <laughs> we can't get there otherwise um, and we'll close up the doors let's see if take a bit early actually um, right okay let's go back to our Abbey tab okay fine well that's where we're up to um, presentation checked and set so I was planning to go at 2-1, but again, I didn't think that was right. Um, so let's go a little bit more. Yeah, also it's 2.5 tons. Yeah, I can't take 2. Point I don't believe those fuel figures. Uh, we'll find out. We'll find out in a minute. Um, so on here, we have to set it manually, the cruise level. So I'm going to set this. That's 100, 200, 25, 3, 3, 5. Um, so we're going to go for 
Let's go for two one. Let's go for odds. So two five six. Let's try. Let's try two seven. Let's see what happens. Um, and other than that, we'll leave that normal, normal, and mode in auto. Very importantly, ice detection is on. That's a guarded switch that's always on. Lights and notices set. So, fast and seatbelts come on. Now we've got the <laughs> all the fuel in the world on board. I can't believe we're not going to be over max landing right now as well. Curious, very curious. Um, uh, what else do we need to do? Air conditioning checked and set. So that is all done. Uh, air conditioning is over here. There we go. So we've got it running on the APU air using pack one and two. Um, we'll leave those as they are. Fasten seatbelts are on. Flow meter zero. Fuel contents checked. Anyway, fuel contents, let's actually check it is in the right place. So there we go. There's the feed tanks. And where do they... That's a really good point. Here's the fuel. Of course it is down here. So... You know, we haven't even, well, we're pretty full on the fuel. I mean, I can't believe we need all this, but there we go. Um, so we've got our 10 tons almost. What have we got? We've got three and a half, three and a half. So we've got six, seven tons, nine tons. I think that'd be fine. 26,000 feet limitation in icing. Hopefully we won't experience that today, but we could be a bit heavy for that. If I don't have to record a set, that is all the way over there. We're not going to mess around with that too much. Um, but yeah, you, you have to actually set the date and time. What a pain, eh? Uh, nav aids and area. Let's set up the nav aids. So our departure is going to be. It's handy. The AV tab's integrated. I like that. Papa Foxtrot. Enter. Andy Robinson, thank you so much for your four ninety nine uh, US dollar donation. Really appreciate it, Andy. Andy says, I've never seen one of these. Such a strange little plane. Do you know if it, they ever flew in the US? They did indeed fly in the US, and uh, those liveries are included with this package. So yeah, they were around in the US. About 350 of these were built, so not that many, but they were around, used in Australia as well. Um, they're quite good for low density, but fairly long distance routes, I thought, <laughs> until, I, until, I've, uh, until I've got to this point. <laughs> Toga, you made it on board. Uh, absolutely, thanks for coming along. Uh, Andy says, just ran it through Simbrief. They have got to be wrong. The 146 will cover 1,800 nautical miles. Swiss used to fly them from Zurich to London. Yeah, of course it can. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, if you can get to Zurich, definitely. So the fuel figures we've got are all nonsense. We'll, we'll work it out ourselves. Giuseppe says, if you run out of fuel, that's fine. Finally, we're going to have an emergency landing video. Yeah, it can, it can instantly become one in an aeroplane I very hardly understand. C-Max says, could always shut down one of four engines in the cruise. We could, yeah. We could fire descent without it. Um, but thank you, Andy. Thank you for that donation. Really appreciate it. And yeah, they did indeed have them in America. They, they, they were one of the, I think this was the most successful British commercial jet airliner. Um, pure, you know, because maybe a British aerospace. So that's what I understand anyway. Uh, right, no, uh, this is the RJ, ah, the RJ preset, maybe. Yeah, this is the 146 preset. It could be slightly different. Um, maybe that's what's happened. Let's grab the ATIS now for Glasgow. Unusual. They're not bothering to uh, to report the um, turn on the overhead panel. There we go. They're not bothering to report the runway news on the ages, but there we go. We'll we'll manage with that. Q and H then one zero two nine.
Okay, 1029, 1029. Third altimeter, obviously, down here. Let's zoom it up to 1029. 1029. Sorry, yeah, I was. I think I was chatting away there while muted. <laughs> uh, sorry, guys. Uh, Brian says, I flew several times from MK to Toronto. There you go. Maybe Simbri thinks you fly with the speed out. Yeah, it does sound like it. The PDF version says 300 can do 2,020 kilometers with max payload. Yeah, we're not at max. PFPX is a bit better than Simbrief. Don't know if anyone has made the 146 profile for it. Yeah, that's, it's my fault for not checking that profile. Uh, always someone on mute. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> oh, dear. How long was I on mute for there? Well, anyway, we've got the ATIS. It's not telling us the runway in use, um, so that's a bit annoying. But, uh, oh, got to be careful there. Keep that on yellow. Right. Mustn't fiddle with the toe brakes. So, um, before we do anything else, let's get our clearance. We've got ground 1217. Radio panel, by the way, I'm using the Logitech radio panel. Seems to be working absolutely fine. I've had no no difficulty with that at all. Totally forgot what stand we're on. Uh, hmm. Hmm. Let us go to our charts, airport, and parking stands. I think we're on 11. Twenty seconds muted. Excellent. <laughs> uh, right, we're on. What are we on? We're on stand. Stand eleven. Q and H. One two two nine. Jimmy to Jersey. Glasgow. Good evening. Jersey. Two seven one. Stand eleven. B A one four six three hundred. We have information hotel. Q and H. One zero two nine. Request clearance to Jersey. to Jersey Norbo 1 Hotel Departure Runway 23 Squawk 2736 Jersey 271 Jersey 271 Rebike is correct There we go So that is the Norbo 1 Hotel Let's load that one up Oh it's going to be a good 40 minutes and we're not even at engine start Sorry guys Ah, Departure uh, Norbo 1 Hotel This one here So it's going off from 23 uh, That makes it a bit easier It'll be a bit of a quicker departure we need the GAL 115.4. We're going to take off track 226 away from the GAL, climbing up to 6,000 feet, um, which is going to be our stop altitude. So let's set a few of these things up. Now, this is a bit like the Dash 8's ridiculous autopilot system. Not only do you have to enter the altitude, quite cool that you can use this rotating little handle. Uh, I've not seen that before. I like it. You also have to tell it to arm it, so you have to out-arm. And then I can check down here. There's a little white out. So this is like our flight mode enunciators in the Airbus. So you have to actually tell it to arm. It was called outset in the Dash 8, and I think uh, our Dash 8 pilot in the chat will <laughs> record the, the traumas of that. Um, I don't know what test does. don't know. But there we go. Uh, we need the GAL 115.4. Weirdly, you can tune the current... Um, standby, or you can change the active frequency. Never seen that before, but there we go. So I can just go 1154. Um, and then the backup frequency after Norbo, we're going to Dean Cross 1152. So 1154 pre 1152. I'm going to put the DM meter on so I can actually see it here, otherwise, we don't get it. Um, right, so that is on. We'll put the flight director bars on. Just bolted on there. Absolutely brilliant. And the course originally is going to be 226. I'm not really too worried about Nav 2. Uh, I'm sure the real pilots would set that. 226. Um, I'm not going to bother. I've got it set to Nav 1, so I'm just going to leave it there. Heading bug as well, taking off from runway 24. Heading bug is a bit hidden. It's this little white bug here. It's quite hard to see. Easier thing to do here is to go for the 2D panel, which is quite nice. And then you can just scroll the heading bug just like you would normally. And we'll go for runway uh, 23. So just put it, put it roughly straight ahead initially. Right, there we go. So we've got a stop attitude. We've armed it. We've got our course. I'm going to take off and then I'll go into Vor Lock and we'll climb straight ahead to 6,000 feet out to 40 miles from the Gau and then we'll turn left towards Norbo, uh, which is going to be based on uh, actually Turnberry 1175. What am I talking about? So let's get that set up. And then from Norbo, I'm going to go to Dean Cross. So that is my mission. Right. That is all in. Our taxi out. We're going to push back, obviously. Start all, all our engines and head out for runway 23. 
Okay, I think that's all pretty much done. Let's close this panel. Let's bring up those checklists. No, nav aids and area set. Our timbers q &H set. Cross check briefing complete. Uh, ground up reset. Um, TMS speeds. Here we go then. Let's see if we have the performance to get out of here. I'm going to bring up that TMS panel thrust management system. It's not as good as an auto thrust system. But it's a uh, guy still at gate landed in Manchester. Yeah, of course. <laughs> so we press power on. I haven't ever got the test to work yet. I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong with that. Don't know. Power on. Then press takeoff. Enter the temperature outside, which we know is 16 degrees. 16. And it gives us takeoff thrust. You see, if I put it up a lot and then reset it, it reduces that. So we can go basically full power, 93.7. Um, and I'm going to leave that there. This will take over for the thrust setting on takeoff. Max target EGT of 840. So yeah, pretty easy. Leave that running. We could also set those individually here, but I'm not going to um, do that today because it's a lot of scrolling for you guys to watch. I'm, <laughs> I don't think you can set the tire target T, uh, TGT as well. Hayden J. Robbins, thanks for your three pounds twenty. Really appreciate it, Hayden. Hayden says one pound forty six would have been too tight. <laughs> no worries, Hayden. Thanks so much. Really appreciate it, uh, the donation. Thanks for coming along and supporting the channel as ever. Uh, Doc Retro says, have you already figured out the pitch change button on the autopilot for accelerating later on? Yes, I have. We'll talk about that when we get in the air. Um, but yeah, thanks so much, Hayden, for your donation. Really appreciate it, and I hope you're, you're doing very well. Right. I think we're ready to go. We've got our plan for the departure. We'll have the charts up here, which is really nice. I'm so happy they had the Avi tab added. I think all our doors are closed. So the next step, when this traffic behind us is gone, will be to do the starting checklists. Really Took me a while to get used to the starts, but they're not too bad, so let's get push and start. Jersey 271 request push and start, stand 11. Jersey 271, stand uh, 11, push and start approved, face north. Push and start approved, face north, Jersey 271. Okay. Uh, Jersey 271, can you just check your squad for me, uh, 2736? Oh, sorry, yeah, thank you, 2736, Jersey 271. Last thing, yeah, Thanks. we didn't do that, that's our fault. Down here, uh, squawk is dead easy to set two seven three six. So look at that. Just type. Uh, oh, I say that. Got to be quick enough. Two seven three six. And now I need to change the flight ID by pressing that. And now I can put in in the old. You know, those of you who used to do this on mobile phones, Nokia's and so on. You keep pressing it. Then you press enter. Then you keep pressing it until you get that one so the old t9 keys i don't know if any of those you remember that bee -E. uh, and then we're going to be the 2712 enter seven enter one enter and there we go now flight id back and it shows us squawk 2736 so there we go um we're pushed up facing north so let's put that to transponder let's go and put our beacon on if i can find it i have a horrible feeling it's hidden up here beacon on there we go so that should be the red light and let's get the better push back Thanks for your subscriptions, John, Alan, Chris, uh, Milan. I hope you're enjoying the video. Ground to cockpit. Please show me where you want to go. So it's push proof facing north, which is obviously that way. It's going to be a bit difficult with that traffic there. I assume they're moving. What we're going to do is we'll just do that for now. Ground and then we'll cockpit. discuss Those as required. Right, starting checklist. APU gen, external AC set. We're on the APU gen. So we're using electricity to start the engines. There's DC motors that will spin around that engine before we do it. Beacon is on. Packs and APU air off if starting from. So um, we're going to turn those off. Uh, I think I understand that anyway. But anyway, the packs are going to be off. Uh, and APU air needs to be off. Engine anti-ice on. Bizarre, but there it is. Engine anti-ice is on. AC pumps come on. AC pump on. Fuel pumps on. They're down here. Fuel pumps are all on. Start power norm. So that is over here on the overhead panel. That's in the middle. Start power norm. So this is our little engine panel, which has a you know continuous ignition, the anti-ice and so on. And this is the starting selector. It's quite an easy start on these engines, which it does need to be. Yeah, it, it needs to be. Uh, yeah, Angry Ryan is on duty indeed. <laughs> we get one of these tiny little tugs on this one. Tiny, tiny tugs. But yeah, we, we need it to be easy to start these engines because this is a regional jet. Hopefully the jersey will move. I don't know why it's showing up as an Asiana. I suppose because it's in an Airbus. <laughs> um, hold position, jersey 271. Um, yeah, so we need it to be 
straightforward because we're going to have to start all these engines. What we could do is start them now. Jersey 2 Zen 1. We've got four engines to start. Do you mind if we start them here on stand? Jersey 2 Zen 1, yeah, that's approved. You can uh, start the booth on stand. Thank you. Starting engines, Jersey 2 Zen 1. Excellent. So, uh, yeah, you can do airways, by the way. So, um, if you go in here, we could do a route. Jersey 875 request um, taxi to the room. Somewhere in here. I never use this ever. Here we go. I don't understand it, so I don't really use it. But you can do that. However, uh, custom uh, FNC uh, coming uh, soon. Uh, right, uh, let's go uh, to the uh, engine uh, panel and let's start up those engines. So, really easy. Start power as norm. We're going to put the start master on. And then we're going to do start engine. We're going to start with engine 4. Scroll it all the way to 4. And then press start. Now I've said it's easy. Please work. Engine start. You get engine ignition A and B on. Start operating. We'll come down here and we should see N2 increasing and N1 increasing. That's going to spin up to 15%. And then it's going to sit there as it max motors around. Uh, now I'm going to come down here. Lift the lever. Put it into idle. And there it goes. Suddenly we see fuel flow. That's increasing. Uh, we've got N2 increasing. TGT increasing. So it's lit up. And the N1 increasing. That's now going to stabilize. You can see it already dropping again, so it doesn't take it long to stabilize at all. There we go. Uh, and that's it. I can go to three. And... Start. A, B, start operating. Look at that. It's it's so simple. Really nice. So you can just start them all basically with just changing the selection and then starting it. 15%. Fuel on. There goes a fuel flow. Push back approved, Jesse 271. Thank you. Alright, we've got two engines running. Let's go. I'm going to release the brakes. Parking brake released. It now <laughs> sucks us into this thing. Engine start. Let's give it that checklist now. See our little beacon going. No slats or leading edge flaps on this airplane, unusually. We'll see that shortly. Just massive great flaps that make a good noise. Ooh, 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 ooh. Starting pushback. Excellent, please do. Two engines up and running. Let's go for number two. Start A and B. It, they start so quickly as well. Look at that. 10%, about 15% is when I'm going to put the fuel on. 15% on the N2. So there's 15 the lever down, put it into the on position, and up it goes. Uh, I don't think you can do three and four, and then one and two, because of the way, if I turn this, I, I think it wouldn't work, I think. Judging by the fact we have to have the engine anti on, I'm sure there's all sorts of weird <laughs> procedures and, and limitations on this aeroplane. There we go, that's decreasing. Start lights out, number one. But maybe, maybe you can start more at once than I'm doing. Start, start operating. And here we go. Look at that. Imagine having four jet engines as you push back. Isn't that that must be reassuring? Sun's getting low. It's a bit of an evening flight. Last engine. Great view from the cockpit to see that. I love that. It does feel like a cargo airplane. And I think there's going to be the checklist for after that. There we go. Look. So these are really nice checklists, actually. Once you've read the manual and you've got a bit of an idea of what, where you're looking for these things, it's not too difficult. Operation complete. Set oh, brake. I say that. Parking, this parking brake is difficult. No. Disconnecting toes. There it is. <laughs> I'm getting the hang of it, but it does try and swap between them. So toes going. Uh, anyway, those engines are all stabilized. So let's come back to our overhead panel. And uh, we need to go start power norm, what it is. Start selector master off. So that's the start selector off. Master switch off. They can disconnect. Engine anti-cast as required. Not required. So for some reason we need to turn that off. I don't know why that works. Engine generators on. Gen 1 on. And you can remember three positions on these ones. Brake fans auto on. I need to look up what auto does, but that's already an auto. Hydraulics on and checked. So we take engine 2 pump, engine 3 pump, and check that those are pressurized, which they have. Uh, that's good. Heaters on. Not sure where they are. Uh, APU and engine air. Um, so let's uh, let's not use the APU air because I'm going to turn off the APU. Air. 
There it goes, because we're using the, G uh, the engine power. Um, but what I am going to do is... We could turn on some engine AC for the takeoff. Let's turn on the engine end now. Which is effectively the bleed air. Um, and I'll put the packs on just while we taxi out. Uh, thrust management system as required. That is down here and is set. Doors are closed. Ground equipment removed. Transponder as required. That's all done before takeoff then. Um, I think I'm going to run some of this now. Brakes yellow and green checked yellow. So brakes are definitely on the yellow system down here. Flaps. Let's put the flaps out. We're going to go for flap 18. We see it over here. It knows our weight. Flap 18. Rotate at 130. V2 136. So I'll just click on that. There's 130, 136. So rotate and V2 are marked for us, which is really nice. Um, so yeah, dead easy performance in this airplane. You can just click on that, which is which is great. It's going to be a full hour to take off this one. Not bad, eh? Not bad. Um, so there we go. Flap selected and checked. So they're at 15. Flight instruments checked. Flight director we've got on. And uh, what are we going to use initially? Um, I'm going to have it... Well, we're going to take off straight ahead and then we'll engage some modes. But we've got the altitude armed, most importantly. Trims checked and set. So they are set. That should be in the back of the takeoff band. And these are all otherwise in neutral. Config checked. So we can press this. It's not happy. Obviously, it's not happy. What's it not happy about? Screen heat set off. Not sure why that is. But yeah, let's get some of this anti ice on. So screen heater should be on. The vanes should be on. And the pitot heater should be on. Um, oh, it'd be the parking brake. That's why. Now, there's a transponder set. Briefing removed. Continuous A and B. We would normally do this as we get to the runway, but let's put that on. So continuous relight on the engines, quite common in jet aircraft for takeoff. Cabin secure, that's down here. So this one, they would call you up and I need to slide it across to cabin secure for takeoff. Radar not required. AC pump coming on. You can see how many things there are. <laughs> AC pump on, lights and strobes, TMS, controls, master warning. Great, there's a lot of talking guys. We're ready to go. Jersey 271 request taxi. Lima, Golf, Alpha to Alpha 1, Jersey 271. Okay, brakes released. Seems to work when I just use the tow brakes in this airplane. Let's get out of here. Uh, we are going to go Lima, Golf, Alpha. Alpha 1 is the holding point around the turn. So I can go all the way down to there. So that's fine. Oh, it feels heavier, this one. I mean, we're taking off at 39 tons. It's pretty serious weight. Dash 8 was maximum weight up to sort of 30 tons, pretty much. These small jet engines really spool up and stabilize fast, says Dr. Retro. Yeah, they do indeed. They do indeed. And away we go. Oh, look at that. Look at that. You can bend the, uh, the light around. That is great. I don't know which one does that. I know this one up here you can also angle around. I've not seen before in X-Plane. So we get a bit of nose wheel steering on the pedals. So I'm just using the rudder pedals for now. But I've also got the tiller assigned, which works just fine. Something I've seen in the comments, um, somebody was in the comments saying that they worked on the hydraulic system for this aeroplane and that they said the um, nose wheel didn't have any steering. It was only through the tiller, but I don't know. I, I, I'm assuming Just Flight did their research into it, but uh, yeah, so there we go. Good, so trims are set. You'll notice if I test the flight controls now, I don't get a whole lot. So all I'm really checking is full and free movement of my yoke. Um, if we bring it up, you can check that. But you're not going to see any of the flight controls move. Those of you who've seen the video will know why. Um, we're just controlling the trim tabs. We're not controlling the um, actual flight controls like we would in most airliners these days. So we'll show you that in a second as we taxi out. Four APUs, says Daniel Peterson. Yeah. <laughs> Doc Retro says, working through a copy like this always remembers, one, how much workload the automation in the Airbus takes off the crew. Oh, it does. It does. And remember, the Airbus wasn't much after this, really, I've got to say. But this airplane, so why have we got this design? Why does this airplane look like it does? Well, this was designed to be a robust, reliable and efficient airplane for airlines to use on the regional routes for routes where it ne needed a bigger aircraft than, you know, the, the small jets, the 727 uh, and so on, but also um, smaller than those, but bigger than the, sorry, smaller than those, but bigger than sort of the smaller turboprops, the Fokker F-27, things like that. Should probably turn on some lights. Let's go for I don't know, runway exits. And these have two positions. Let's go for taxi lights. On there we go. So that's where they came up with the design. They settled quite early on on this sort of four engine high wing design. Four engine gives it better performance, lets it fly out of shorter, more restricted airports. 
So you, obviously London City is what it's famous for. This was the first proper jet airliner that had certification to fly from London City because of its design. So it was it paid off really because for a long time this was the only jet you saw there. The rest were turboprops. Now obviously now we have the Embraer 170, the A318 has been approved all sorts. But uh, back then this was the first one. So if you look at the ailerons, if I move the controls, the roll spotter comes up, but the aileron barely moves. It just I'm just moving a trim tab and that will actually then fly the control into the right place for takeoff. Anyway, there we go. Oh, there's an ASX 915 going for a flight. Let's stay on the taxiway, please. Massive great speed brake at the back. There it is. And that brings up those uh, lift spoilers. It's taking a fair bit of thrust to get it moving. Axeman 3D, good to see you. Axeman says, I love the look of the 146. Looks military with the anhedral design on all the engines. Yeah, it does look military. Yeah, exactly. I totally agree. And it's got so many systems, like the auto brake fans. I need to learn what that means. There's those taxi lights up in that mount on the wing. Jumbolina, yeah, that's another name for it. Four engines make it quieter. Figure that one out, South End Aviation says. Yeah, so not only were they quiet engines, but having four does have an advantage. Any of you who've been around an A330 as it takes off will know it's incredibly noisy. Um, the problem with, the A3, with these big two engines is that they, the noise from jet engines, a lot of it comes from the displaced air. So with smaller engines, you've got a smaller sort of displacement per engine. So that helps, I, I believe, helps keep the noise down, although Wikipedia didn't, didn't mention that, but yeah. Uh, Jersey 271, tower is offline, so 122.com, 122.8, Jersey 271, thanks for your help, goodbye. Oh, if I could say goodbye properly. 1228, onto Unicom, let's try and taxi in the right way. So let's get our departure chart up and ready. Here's the plan then guys, take off, get onto this course, head out to 12 miles and then we can at 14 miles turn left in set 185, so a bit of creative navigate. Oh there's someone right downwind, touch and go, so hopefully this Alitalia can depart and then the touch and go we can take off after them. Nice big cockpit though. This is a yeah. This is a, you know this is a real airliner. There's no a real jetliner. There's no doubt about it. It's uh, it's got that feel to it. PDF says in icing conditions, select engine anti ice and outer wing tail anti ice on and mate mint of 67% N2. When ice conditions is gone, select inner wing de-ice and on for one minute. I don't get it. Yeah, Danny Robot, exactly. This is what this sort of airplane has. A lot of different restrictions. Oh, there you go, they're turning final. So hopefully we can both get away in the gap when this aircraft does its touch and go. Not often we hear VFR traffic. Brilliant. Maybe I'll try some modes for takeoff. I mean, we're going to pitch up to about 15 degrees. Um, pretty standard sort of jet takeoff stuff. If I press heading, maybe I'll maybe I'll leave heading up there. But then it locks out out arm. So let's repress out arm. That's what I've, I've been caught up by that a lot. If you sometimes if, I found it where if I press this, it knocks this one out. So anyway, so we're going to do this initially, and then we'll climb at IS when we accelerate. I've got a button control wheel steering assigned, ready for use for that. And let's get underway. Flight time is about an hour and ten, but I'm hoping it'll be quicker because I think we're going to be a bit higher, a bit faster than our flight plan allowed us to be. What we can do is when we're parked up, I'm going to set uh, set a nice wing view for us. If I can find my codes for that. I can. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Busy looking at paperwork. So we really need two minutes spacing. So I'm going to come to a stop here and now I'm just going to set that view for you guys. So while the Alitalia lines up, where do we fancy sitting for this one? A sort of forward wing view. Oh, actually, already you're sitting there. You can hear all the passengers. That's quite fun. A rear wing view, something like that. What do you guys fancy? That's not much fun, is it? Let's go back to the front. If 
you know just three by three seating unusual for a regional airline like this but there we go that's one of the advantages of making it so chunky that's quite nice so i'm going to do uh let's do so now we got that view and we got that view great let's close that door keep all the noise of the passengers and the, <laughs> the screaming out of the way that Alitalia is gone we can now run through our checklists uh, oh no we've done the checklist yeah we're ready to go okay let's get rid of that okay Jersey 271 lining up and taking off runway 23 straight ahead to Norbo 6000 feet Oscar good to see you loves the Avro excellent right let's get these lights to landing a bit brighter runway lights on screen wipers can stay off of course and up here somewhere, we're going to have the strobe lights. There we go. Speeds are set. So, we're going to use a thrust management system. And we're going to rotate at the 130, 128. Go on, airplane. God, you really got to keep the thrust up. It does just slow down. An hour and one minute. Excellent. This is going to be the slowest takeoff. We can do a bit of what is it doing now when climbing out, test the autopilot a bit. Yeah, we will exactly. We're going to see lots of that. So, 6,000 feet, which is in an armed clear on the approach strobe lights are on we're all ready for takeoff checklist is complete i think we're going to be slower than the alitalia especially if they're not in 146 which i doubt they are as there isn't one for microsoft flight simulator and this is the x-plane they could be p3d of course so let's go jersey 271 taking off glasgow 23 right here we go then so thrust management system really clever all i have to do put a little bit of forward pressure oh yeah let's just do a takeoff config check just to make sure yeah, it's happy. So, thrust, let it stabilize. All looking good. And now, chuck it forward. And it, you'll see, I've now let go of my thrust levers, and they're automatically going to move themselves into the 93.7, which will be targeted here on the M1. So, there's takeoff thrust set. Quite quick at doing that as well. Faster than the Beluga is, certainly. Airspeed's alive. All looking good. It's quite quick. Uh, we'll have no trouble getting to Jersey. I'm sure. I'm sure we will. There's 100 knots. And V1 rotates. Up we go. Positive climb. Gear up. Pitching to 15 degrees initially. Bit of trim. And what you'll notice, I'm going to leave the flaps out a little bit. And as we accelerate, you'll hear that howl. It's pretty cool. You might be able to hear it a bit on the outside in seconds. Glorious. And yeah, there's that. It's modeled really nicely, the howl. <laughs> anyway, we'll keep it at 15 degrees. Oh, a bit less, actually. It's definitely not. It's not got endless performance then. Only a 10 degrees pitch. Through 1,000 feet. I'm going to turn right to start to intercept that radial. So let's bring the heading bug slightly to the right. I'm going to engage the autopilot. Weirdly, that's down there. And I'm going to engage IS. And now we're going to engage Vorlock. And it should integrate... Uh, intercept this radial nose comes to the left so we're on that radial now climbing straight ahead and you'll see it's trying to maintain about 140 knots i'm going to press the nose wheel uh, the control wheel steering button you'll see the uh autopilot light go off and it will say sync press that sync there it goes now i can lower the nose and i could do this in vertical speed which i think might be the more common way because now i'm having to hold control wheel steering while i lower the nose and let the airplane accelerate um so let's try 160 knots for a bit. And now if I let go, it'll continue to target 160 knots and you'll see it pitching up in IS. Alternatively, I can press VS and it will do exactly the same. So it's targeting 2,200 feet per minute. I can press the sink, lower the nose, and then let go again at 1,500 feet per minute. And there we go, 1,500 feet per minute. That's what we want. You can start to hear the howl of the engine. Uh, sorry, of the, the flaps. So let's bring those flaps in. And there we go. Quite a capable autopilot, you know. For, considering what it was intended for, it, it's, it's very good. So we're going to 6,000 feet, 12 miles on the gal, and then we'll go to 14 miles and make our left turn 185 towards the point Norbo. Uh, 
Now, we're going to imagine that we're cleared to keep climbing. So I'm going to whiz this up. Hey, and we said, what do we say in the end? Something like 27,000. Let's see if we can make 27. I'm curious. Um, so we're climbing now in vertical speed. You see how that speed's increasing. There's 250. Probably a bit fast. So let's uh, let's put it back in IS mode. Now we've got further climb. IS. And now let's see how long we can go up at 250 knots. And we'll set standards 1013. So lots to do in this airplane, but if you've flown the 727 or the 737-200, you'll be very, very accustomed to this sort of thing. I'm just using normal tracking and radials and so on, but as I said, you could just use the, the default FMC from X-Plane, because it does, as you'll see, have the magical LNAV and VNAV. So I think it's going to be useful because then, then you could use this on more complex routes, uh, which would be nice. CRDME saying 10 miles, we're going out to 12 miles, we need to be at 6, but we've ignoring that one. So 14 miles, then we make our left turn towards uh, Norbo, which is on the 18, or we need to be 185 inbounds to Turnbury. So to set this up, I'm going to cheat, well, I'm not going to cheat, I'm going to put the heading bug synchronized, I'm going to engage heading mode, now I'm going to change the course to 185. There it is, and you can see that we're currently one mile away from that point uh, from Norbo, so we're so close now that I may as well get ready for the next bit. So let's swap the frequency over with the flip-flop switch. There it goes. This should now zoom over to the other side, and simply I'll press Vorlock. And fingers crossed, it will turn left and intercept it. Let's run the after takeoff climb checklist. Oh yeah. Power, we've got the power set at takeoff thrust still, so let's go to sync. And it's now being synchronized to Engine Master 1, and I'll bring the thrust back a bit, keep the TGTs under control. I've got to do a bit more research into exactly how you uh, decide on your climb thrust and so on. You could just go MCT, because I know max continuous thrust will be safe, which is 857 TGT. You'll notice that by pressing that, the thrust management system is engaged again and it's spooling up the engines. Um, so it's a, it's a funny system this, but I'm going to go to sync and then I have control. It's effectively manual thrust. So it's surprising how much thrust it can maintain. Right, let's not forget the heading bug. Let's bring it back round to point two one eight five, and we are going straight to Norbo. We'll be there in no time. After Norbo, I want to go on one three nine to Dean Cross one one five decimal two. So let's in the standby put one one five two, put ourselves into heading again. Activate Dean Cross, and we want a course of 139. So a bit further to the left. 139. There it is. We're pretty much on that already. So let's go Vore Lock. 72 miles away. Actually, no, we have the warning flag. Oh, it's interesting. It's not picking it up. What have I done here? 115 decimal 2 for Dean Cross. 72 miles away, which it is. And uh, should be on the inbound course 139. That is very strange. I don't know why it's doing that. I don't know if it's x -plane saying we're too low. 72 miles, 10 or 12,000 feet. I'd have thought we'd be alright, but we shall find out. Anyway, there we go. Scooting off from Norbo. <laughs> we'll make our way over to Dean Cross when we can pick it up. Also got my uh, RMI needles here when it gets the signal. It's funny, it's got the DME, so I think it will come to life shortly. Butty 2 says, be a very good entry airplane for things a lot faster. Yeah, it's good practice. It's not you know, not the fastest airplane. I'm not going to climb very fast. I can only go up to, what, 300, just over 300 knots here. The new gizmo on top of the AviTab screen, this is part of their software. So this is with the 146. So you can see here it gives me my GPS altitude, my actual, uh, sorry, my radio altimeter altitude effectively, the above ground level, my track, my actual coordinates. I don't know why I want that. My ground speed. I haven't figured out how to get rid of this, but you can click here to swap over, and we could do release crew. However, I don't I never managed to hear it unless I go. No, I never hear the PAs. I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong for those. Right, that was a lot of talking. That's my home key, yeah. So let's, let's put it there. Is that a good view? Should we try a different view? You've got to be very, very careful when you choose your seat in this aeroplane if you fly on one. Very specific seats that I like. <laughs> the 
this one can be home. I'm not sure I like this one so much either. Might move one further back. Dean crosses dodgy next plane. Ah, yeah, that could be the problem. It's definitely not not working. Although we are counting down towards it. Don't worry. The next one we're going to is Manchester, so we could just take a direct to Manchester. I might do that if, if this isn't going to work for us. Kai says that sound reminds me of being in Dalaman with the A320s uh, screaming past me. Excellent. <laughs> Danny says, I need to get used to the fact we don't have a display to see where we are flying from above, like in the modern planes. Yeah. You get your DME here, as long as you turn it on, and your ground speed. Pretty cool to have a ground speed. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's pretty basic. We can turn on the weather radar. That does work. There you go. Keep an eye on the fuel, but I think we're going to have loads of fuel. Let's do this then. Gear is up. The lights are out. Flaps are up. TMS is now set to sync. Engine air, we left it on. <laughs> we took off with the packs on and the engine air on, so that's fine. Um, APU air off, which is off. Packs are on, pressurization check. So let's take a look at the pressurization. It's over here. So that's what we set. Where is the cabin altitude display? I feel like that would probably be displayed somewhere. Hmm. Dark temperature, cabin temperature. Oh, it's a bit cold. That's only 18 degrees there. Let's turn up the temperatures. And you see the duck temperature's increasing. <laughs> Brilliant. Every button in here makes a sound as well. When you change the, the packs, you hear the airflow go up and down. It, it's quite, imp it, it, well, it is impressive. It is no doubt impressive. There must be a massive great warning for the cabin. Here it is by the FO. They, they want it to be that obvious. So, cabin is climbing about 500 feet per minute. That's safe. Um, the Altitude and differential pressure look reasonable. So cabin altitude 4,500 feet, differential pressure 4.5. I expect the delta P, the differential pressure, to reach about, um, well, a bit lower actually, 7.5 psi. It's, yeah, about 8 is the maximum in the Airbus. Climb altimeters are on standard. Oh, here we go. We can turn some of these hydraulic backups off. So. Not sure where that is. I think that's off. Uh, PTU can come off. Oh, we didn't turn it on. Whoops. Brake fans auto. APU stop. We already stopped that. Ice protection not required. Lights and notices. We've done. Next step will be the descent checklist. Look at that. So we've done it. So I have to do. Oh, there you go. Transfer to right tank. So it's transferring the fuel out from the center tank. Makes sense. Yeah, I had to do a bit of a bit of learning with this airplane. It took me, you know, a couple of hours of setup and so on. And I've done a few starts with it um but it is very very you know when you get your head around it again it's just an airplane the, the thing that takes the longest in these jet airliners is just learning the setup once you've done it in the air what am i going to do now i'm going to check the pressurization check the fuel i'm going to um tune nav aids unsuccessfully fuel transfer engine ignition on oh yeah we've got continuous ignition let's turn that off there we go um, and you get used to the logic of this panel it is a very nice panel um, it's just these bizarre switches. They said these in the Queen's flight. Yes, Axeman, and that is included. There is the Queen's flight um, 146 included in this package, which is really cool. Oh, no. What have I done? I've lost my... Why can't I move my seats? Hmm. Oh, it's because I'm doing this. Hey, there we go. Right. There we go. I was going to say. Okay, once we're in the cruise, we're going to set some better better views. You can hear as well, it gets louder in the cockpit when you open the flight deck door. Pretty cool. Nice detail. I like it. Then it goes quiet again. Really nice. Right. 38 miles away from Dean Cross, still not showing up, so yeah, there must be a problem with that. Better bus at landing if you have the Queen on board, says John. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> yeah, if you are watching, do please hit the like button if you're enjoying it. Thank you all for coming along. Um, but yeah, I hope you're enjoying this little little sneak preview of this aeroplane. It's, it's, it's still a work in progress, as I said, but coming very soon for those of you interested. Um, what else? We got? Oh, here's the audio panel. So yeah, we've got VHF1 selected and listening, so that's good. 
Are we running out of steam yet? 20,000 feet. Mm, not quite 1,000 feet per minute. Let's go to MCT thrust. 857 target EGT. TGT, sorry. So that can give us a bit more thrust. It's applying. You can have a TCAS as well. If I go here, press that. It says TCAS off. That would be because this isn't on tier R8. There we go. Three nautical miles. I think we can change the range down here. Ten nautical miles. There we go. Let's see if we can spot anything on the TCAS. That thrust increase has really helped us out. So we're going to soar through 21,000 feet. No problem. Again, they do provide you with all the uh, the, core, the proper performance. So you can work it out yourself. Lucky 2 says, The Queen had one and the Prince of Wales used to fly his own. Oh, fantastic. There you go. Thanks, Shamrock1710. Thanks for the like. Really appreciate it. Thank you to those who added the like there. <laughs> really appreciate it. Walter says the RG, RJ85 is the updated version of the BA146. So do you know if they will make the RJ85? Yeah, I've heard that they, they've said depending on how this one goes, I think. It's not an official line from the company. I just think I remember a comment. So I don't think it's it's not directly planned but uh, at the moment. But maybe is the, probably the best answer I, I'd be willing to give for that. Maybe. <laughs> Dave says she's sitting on two cushions with a P. There you go. Epatha says, I do that all the time with Avitab. Yeah, and that's my classic. <laughs> Gianluca says, hey, love your stream and videos. Very informative. Back to flying anytime soon, IRL. Thank you very much, Gianluca. Really appreciate it. Um, no, uh, not at the moment. We are waiting to see what happens in um, May, I suppose, in the UK. But no. Done a little bit of uh, general aviation, though, which I'm very happy about. So I've been very lucky to get a chance to do some general aviation flying. Thanks to some very kind people, but uh, I have not been commercially flying, no, no. Good. Right, I think this is all working out as we would hope. Uh, yeah, so we're going up to, we said 27, so we're going to cruise higher than my flight plan. It's having no trouble, look, 1,000 feet per minute. Fuel, how much have we burnt to get up here? We were at 9 tons, we're now at 3.5, 3.5, so that's 6, 7, 7, 5, 8, 5. Oh, well, we've burnt 1,500 kilos, if that. I mean, that's not bad at all. We're going to arrive with too much fuel. We're going to be over the landing way, I suspect. <laughs> Might have to reduce the fuel. Lauren V says, On further review, my landing wasn't as good as I thought. I'm going to blame the scenery that didn't fully load and be happy about the autosave I have in place to try all the other runways. There you go. <laughs> Danny says, I'm so excited for this aircraft. Just looked at the 146 manual from Just Flight. It's so detailed. Yeah, it's all in there. Right, we're getting close to Dean Cross. This isn't working at all. So we're now going to go to the Mike Charlie Tango. 11355. Disappointing. Explain. I don't know why it's done that to us. Uh, in fact, let's put it into heading before I make a complete mess of this. And the course from Dean Cross was meant to be 156. So let's just find out how far off we were. Eh, not bad. So I'll do Vorlock now. And we'll intercept that towards Dean Cross. 98. Sorry, towards Manchester, 98 miles away. 2,000 feet to go. We're having no trouble. No trouble at all. Although we are using a lot of thrust, I suppose, MCT. But, yeah. Nice reflections on these glass instruments. I quite like that. I'm not sure why X playing the sun always seems to come through the, uh, the the cockpit, though, quite easily. Here, by the way, this is the oxygen. So I should have actually tested this. You should... I think that's off. So you open this and turn that something like that and that gives us the pressure <laughs> so that it's available again clunky systems that you don't see these days so much a bit more a bit more thought out no airport found 
I don't believe you. There we go. Look at that. Oh, we could go even higher. Now, I have overtaken one of these in a Dash 8. So I was in a Dash 8. There was a 146 above us, and I, I went faster than it. So although it can go up higher and faster, I know that they, they didn't always. <laughs> Last thousand feet to go. Interception that VOR. Excellent. Hayden J. Robin says the 146 was built near me in Hatfield. Hurts. Excellent. Yes, of course it was. Yeah, yeah. So built all over the UK. Parts from all over the place were then assembled. And I think that's why there's one in Manchester as well. Wood just says, can't wait for this plane to get released. Yeah, it's coming soon. Coming very soon. Callum says, thought I recognised that voice. If I'd known I had a celebrity on frequency, I might have sounded a bit more cheery. Thanks for flying from uh, Glasgow Ground. Excellent, Callum. <laughs> no problem at all. Uh, you, you're excellent. Really helpful. Thanks for, for looking after us. Just a few of us today. So, uh, yeah, thanks for, thanks for doing that. Oscar says, I've got some pictures from jump seating in the Avro. Is there maybe a Discord where I can post them? Yeah, we have our Discord. So tag me if you do put them into the Discord. Uh, link should be in the description or put exclamation mark Discord into the chat. Right, level off. Out mode goes to green, as you're all familiar with from the Airbus. Green is active now, so it's in out. So it's going to level off at 27,000. VOR is still green, so that's good. And it's flying along, tracking towards Manchester. After Manchester, we're going to route to the Honley VOR near Birmingham. Is that traffic showing up there? I feel like that is mm, not a very not a very clear display. Let's put this one, three, there it is. Cat two aeroplane. This the reason you see this placard here is because um, this is Cat two certified. Aircraft like this that aren't quite as uh, let's bring that thrust back. I want to get there while it's still daylight, but also in one piece. So aircraft like this are certified um, to fly up to Cat two, as you can tell. I don't think it can auto land, judging by the fact it's got apparently one autopilot and again I need to do more reading on it um, but anyway this is a, here because if this airplane has any problems say it has a, a system downgrade there's a problem with one of the electric systems or navigation aids or pilots report that it doesn't fly an LS properly or pilot reports that it, it has done a bad sort of approach then it could be downgraded to cat 1 and there'll be a big red panel underneath this so they'll unscrew the cat 2 and swap it around and it'll say cat 1 really simple system but it's just there to remind you so if you're flying along and you're beginning your approach, you don't accidentally decide to do a, a CAT 2 approach when you're not certified. A lot of certification goes into getting an airplane from CAT 1 to CAT 2. It's a huge difference. Kai says, I'm going to do some history homework. Yay, not really. <laughs> Thanks for the stream and battle landing. No pressure at all. I can see the silky oily butter coming out. Thanks, Kai. I doubt that. This is Jersey here. We've got to, we just got to get in safely. <laughs> Ah, George says your thumbnail's really low resolution. Okay, that's interesting. Sorry about that. Yeah, sh shouldn't be, but there we go. Lauren V says, did the flight plan think the 146 is a turboprop or something? I'm not sure. I mean, I just used the preset. I should have checked it myself. It's, it's not even, it's not, anyways. It's not Simbrief's fault at all. But, uh, yeah. I mean, this is, the, the flight level gave it away. 210 was too low. Thanks so much, Anonymous, for buying the stickers. I hope you enjoy them. Thanks for, for choosing 320s in Pilot Store. <laughs> um, but yeah, I hope you, I hope you enjoy those. Thank you. If they were, if whoever it was, you can put your name in chat. So here's our speed then. Look at that. We're at decimal 65. Just going to bring the thrust back now before we overspeed. So we've still got excess thrust here at 27,000 feet. It's just notable that we have this, look at that, 26,000 feet limitation in icing. Now, by the time you're above 26,000, you should normally be out of uh, icing conditions. It should be too cold. But I don't know whether this means that even in cloud, you would need to descend again or not. It says in icing, though. I think that means if ice is actually building up, I'm guessing. Not icing conditions, but there we go. Uh, that was a bit too much power off. Difficult to balance. There we go. Victor Tango says, I'm afraid dinner's almost ready, so I must go. Enjoy the rest of the flight, and thank you for another very interesting stream. You're welcome, Victor Tango. Thanks for coming along. Marcel says, been flying the Solus 319 with Pilot to ATC, which is great. Hoping to make the transition to VATSIM. Just waiting for your tutorial. Yeah, I, was, uh, I know. I'm still working. I was still thinking about that one. Sorry, uh, Marcel. 
32 says, is this FMC very different to the Airbus and or Boeing? One more FMC procedure to learn would be great. Uh, this is just the default X-Plane one. So this is not um, a BAE 146 FMC. Um, I don't know how to use this one. I, I think it's pretty simple, but um, you can use this. And I believe that would then mean LNAV would work if you wanted to use LNAV. So I, if I was told by a traffic control, some things like uh, you know an airway to join, then I could type it into there. However, they are working on a custom FNC, which will be included or given free of charge to those who've already bought it, of course. Uh, but that's not ready for launch. That'll be coming out shortly afterwards. So for now, we're going with the, the traditional um, radio navigation. But like I say, I could have just put the route in here. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure it would have worked. But I haven't tried it really. Lauren V says the Dash 8 was just as fast, if not more, as any regional jet on flights of about an hour. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it was great. Oh, it's great. My father says the pilots wave to each other like bus drivers. <laughs> sometimes, rarely though, but sometimes when you can see each other, I'm talking about exclusively on the ground, of course. In flight, in aircraft like this, if you see a company aeroplane, so, oh yeah, I've left all my lights on, but you'll see that unlike the Airbus, these landing lights are sitting in the wing, so you can turn these on and off. So, it doesn't make any difference. So, what I can do, is oh sorry this is the wing light pointing back here yeah and these are the uh, uh, landing and taxi I think they're the taxi lights as well so what you can do and I don't know if our Q400 pilot is still in the chat but uh, yeah the taxi lights are in the wing there um, you could if you see a colleague coming the other way directly above you you could flash your lights to them <laughs> oh it does run out of uh, well it does just does have extra energy I'm assuming that's the overspeed alarm. We're right on the edge there. So let's find a decent thrust. Now this is the problem. I don't think there's a way to make this this th this thrust system won't allow me. Oh, I know why it's doing it. It keeps pushing them back up to MCT. I keep lowering them, but I need to go back to sync. There we go. There we go. That would make sense. <laughs> Anyway, but no, so waving into each other, we can do on the ground. Obviously, you'll never see another pilot in flight, you hope, <laughs> from another airplane. Oh, speed's washing off too much now. Come on, keep going. You can do it, airplane. We're only 40 miles from Manchester. Lauren V says the default X plane FMC is a bit 737 ish, so you should be able to use it if you can use the seat. Oh, there we go. Simon says, talking about LNAV, I'm really excited for the next announcement fly-by-wire update with custom LNAV being implemented in a few days, derived from the working title CJ4 mod, which already works very nice. Oh, now that is exciting. I'm looking forward to that indeed. Yeah, that sounds good. I have to keep an eye out for that. Ollie says, just reached my cruise in 330 in A320. I'll be able to be more active in the uh, chat if my takeoff wasn't great because of my broken fingers. Oh dear, broken fingers doesn't sound good. I hope you get better soon. Danny says, question, do you as a pilot notice the difference when you're flying with or without shark nets? Uh, no. There's a tiny difference. If it, it, The Airbus is supposedly a little bit slipperier, but no, I basically don't notice the, the, the difference. It's just usually a bit of a new aeroplane. Lauren B says, if you're not clacking, you're slacking. Yeah, <laughs> I hadn't heard that one before. Try and balance that thrust. Ed Haslam, good to see you, Ed. Ed says, a bit late to the stream tonight and may have to shoot off soon. But I just wanted to pop in for a bit to say hi. Thanks, Ed. Appreciate it. Thanks for coming along. Glad you like the 146. Let's go and explore. We got 27 miles. Not too long. Let's go and pick that wing view. I'm not happy with the one we've got. I think we can do better. Well, without going outside the airplane. No, that's too far back. What do you guys think? You, you get pretty restricted views in this for <laughs> obvious reasons. Bit of a shame, really. Nice view of the ground, I suppose. Oh, there we go. That could be alright. 
Okay, let me just check. Control 8. So we got that one for the captain's seat, and we got that one for the rear. There we go, that's proper passenger view, isn't it? Good stuff. Pill UK says that's a nice looking aircraft. Yeah, I think so too. Martin Scarf, hello, thanks for coming. I hope you're doing well, Martin. It's been a while since I've seen a lot of you guys. It's been a yeah, a whole week I think since the last stream. So we're back to our Sunday afternoon stream. Sorry about the last week. I, it's been I managed a couple of videos with this, but uh, otherwise I haven't, haven't been able to stream as much as I'd hoped. Oh yeah, we haven't done a flyby. Niels, thank you very much for your 100 Danish Krona donation. And there's the pair. The pair has made an appearance. Thanks, Niels. Really appreciate it. I hope you're doing well. And thank you. Very generous. Very kind of you. Um, and yeah, I hope you enjoy the stream. As we storm along down to Jersey. 40 miles to go to Manchester. We'll have to check the toilet in a minute, Mal. Yeah, good question. But thank you, uh, Niels. Thank you for the donation. Really appreciate it. I hope you're doing very well. John says, at least it doesn't constantly say overspeed, overspeed, overspeed. No, it just does clackety, clackety, clack. <laughs> Windshear head wants to see the RJ variant. Yeah, I'm sure if this one does, well, I hope if this one does well, they might think about it. Neil says it might be a day one uh, purchase, but I do look forward to the custom FNC. Good move, just like, yeah, I'm looking forward to that too. Something to try out. It's been quite nice for me because I can ignore the FNC and just learn, you know, how to power on the airplane and everything else. Um, so I, I have quite enjoyed that. Looks like there's some traffic ahead of us on the TCAS. Supposed to zoom in on the range in... Yeah, incredibly tiny display, probably well above us. Yeah, it's been quite nice, so I can just learn the airplane. It's quite fun having these old school artificial horizons and uh, HSI down here. Let's look at those brake temperatures. There you go, the highest brake temperature now is minus 33 and the rest are a bit colder. <laughs> Brilliant. ADF can be tuned down here, of course, uh, and then you can select your ADF needle on here by pressing that to ADF. So from Manchester, I want to go to Honley. So you know the drill by now. Heading. It's funny. I mean, this is a whole process where you've got lots of room to get something wrong. And in the Airbus, this is just something that just happens automatically. Minimum effort required to fly over a VOR and go to the next one. One, one, three, six, five. Swap. Inbound course to Honley is going to be one, six, one. There it is. Look at that. We're almost spot on. Let's try Vorlock. Thank you. Aeroplane. There we go. So yeah, the sounds on this all around are remarkable. They adjust very well for wherever you are in the aeroplane. They also apparently adjust according to temperature and air pressure and density altitude. Now, how that works, I don't know. I haven't noticed it, I must confess. But that is what they claim. Um, so I, I need to test it out a bit more. But yeah, you can hear, depending where I am, you get a nice whine from the engines up here. And then at the back, you get the roar and the hiss of the airflow. And the flyby sounds are fantastic as well. And the same for landing. Love the four little contrails. Um, and the flap noise you'll hear again on the approach, uh, including in the replay, that's pretty nice. So, uh, so yeah, thanks again, Neil, set the nation, really appreciate it. Right, how long to go? 56 miles to Honolulu. Our first officer's leaving us again. James Lee says, awesome stream, might test myself. However, I am P3D. <laughs> Thanks, James. Glad you enjoyed it. Yeah, it's quite something. Um, it's 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 just really interesting, especially the overhead panel. But it's quite modern in its own way. But then it was built around the same time as the Airbus, so it should be. But um, but yeah, it's it's just a fascinating airplane. And it is great. I, I, I don't get bored of looking at it. So many odd little things. They've done a great job on the texturing. It looks, yeah, yeah, this is a top level 
add-on. There's no doubt about it. Look at the way the, the wings are shiny, and then the, the sort of the heated leading edge is a little bit uh, matte effect, stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. Oh, look, the door is open now, and you can see through. Let's close that up. Oh, I wonder. That would be a bit fancy. And now it's closed. <laughs> oh, I can open it from here. <laughs> oh, dear. I've never seen that before. Brilliant. Oh, you can probably find I could start changing the autopilot from outside then. You can do the doors like that on the ground. I'm not going to try now, obviously. So it's anhedral, which is why the wings point down slightly, and there's a, there is a reason for that. You're probably used to seeing commercial aircraft have wings that point up slightly. That's the normal sort of position. That's because if you have your wings pointing up, it adds stability to the aeroplane. Now, that's used on low-wing aeroplanes because we want stability. And by stability, I mean if the aeroplane goes slightly at an angle, it'll try and recenter itself to neutral. Uh, that would be stability. Instability would be it tries to go away from neutral. So if, you, if it gets slightly upset it will continue to get more upset the reason they do anhedral on high wing aircraft is because a high wing design is by nature stable and the problem is if you then also have the wings pointing up called dihedral if they're pointing up what happens is it's, it's too stable and it becomes difficult to maneuver so because it's already stable by the design of having the high wing they actually put them pointing slightly down now the dash 8 doesn't do this um, but big cargo aircraft typically do I think the 100, as ever, the most stretched version is my favourite. It's uh, Sorry, the 300 is, is my favourite. There is also the 100 and 200 included. Here's Orbex South Scenery we're arriving in. There's a clear line. <laughs> yeah, as ever, the, the stretched versions do tend to look, uh, look a, bit, a bit more complete. It was meant to be a little bit longer than this, the stretched version, but they didn't get round to it. They, they made it a less extreme one. Winter Ahead says, I bet 99% of pilots now, they have no clue how to fly this. <laughs> it is a, it's a really, um, yeah, it is a, a bit of a difficult one. Matt says, looks like the chump seat would be pretty tight. Yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm a sh Oh, wow. Well, look at this. Now, it did say that they've modelled the jump seat position. There we go. There's nothing missing here. I'm not sure how to do it though, but it is modelled, um, so I, yeah, obviously that must just fold out. <laughs> if I knew how to do it, I'll put it away, stop fiddling with things. Oh yeah, we're going to go and check if the, uh, is the toilet modelled. No toilet at the front, unless this is one, maybe, oh yeah, that's the toilet, but no, sadly not, so I think the back is the same. The air stairs are modelled and the boarding lights I think work as well. I'm not sure, but yeah, the stairs you can fold out, and this is the door, obviously, with the uh, pickable handle. Right, we'll stop messing around. Get back into the cockpit. Close up that door. Matteo says, my multitasking has reached the limit. Got to dash and finish preparing dinner. Back to work on Tuesday, but as long as stream on Sunday, I should manage to join. See you soon, Captain. Thanks, Matteo. Glad to hear you came back to work. I hope it goes well, and uh, thanks for coming along, and thanks for moderating today. And enjoy your dinner. I'm getting hungry myself. This is taking a little bit longer than I had anticipated. It took me an hour to get in the air. <laughs> Sven says, do you know if the 146 is going to have, um, I assume, that, uh, the retrofit cockpit? Um, so I think they're thinking about it, but I don't know if it's planned. No, I don't know properly yet. Stephen says, Jersey approach and tower on. There is also very blustery wind. Oh, dear. That's not good. Not good for my practice of this airplane. Nicholas says, obligatory, the Airbus does it automatically. Absolutely. You can take that as red. I should probably have written that on my overlay for today's flight so that... Uh, I might start doing that for any any other airliner other than the A320. All right, but the Airbus does it itself. Or uh, the Airbus is better. Something like that. <laughs> Timo says, so can you fly any route in this plane? Most of the routes nowadays don't look like they're based on radio navigation. Yes, so if you put it into here, don't want to mess it up, but let's give it a try. So to Jersey. Uh, and then you could put in via. So we went via Dean Cross. 
Um, next page. Match Ali Tango. Now we're going to Honley. Which we're basically at. <laughs> From Honley, we're going to Southampton. Not Sal. Sam. VOR. 11335 is execute. So now I'm just going to put it into heading. Don't turn. There you go. Um, let's see. That's on nav. Nav 1. See, this is on the VOR. What happens if I change that to nav? Points behind. Let's do direct to Sam. Execute. Non database. I don't know why. Let's do direct to Honley. There you go. Yeah. So so you could just put in a waypoint. Um, oh, let's pick another one. Uh, what's an actual waypoint we could just point it at? But anyway, as you can see, you can point this. Um, and if I put it back to nav, it goes back to VOR. So VOR INS. Whereas I put it up, it's those R nav. So if you set this to RNAV, I think you could then fly it like this and you can engage a lateral navigation mode up here. Yeah, so so it is possible even with the default. But like I say, the custom FMC is on the way. I think it's not meant to be more than a couple of months after release. And it'll be free of charge. So, so those of you who have it already. So let's leave that in normal nav. Uh, and now we are going to Southampton. 11335. Flip it over. Inbound course to Samson 173. Vore lock, please. And away we go. Lovely. Bit further than I thought this flight. <laughs> okay, let's get back to airports, Jersey. So, our uh, approach. Thank you very much, uh, Michael Rudolph, for your uh, five. Swiss Frank Donation, really appreciate it. Michael says, used to fly Zurich to London City quite often on the Swiss RJ100. Best regional plane ever with 3 plus 2 seating. Most all other airlines use 3 plus 3. Now that's interesting, yeah. I didn't know they did that. So yeah, this airplane could have 3 and 2. It could have 3 and 3 as well. Um, so uh, yeah, it was quite a chunky airplane as you can imagine. But thank you very much, Michael, for that donation. Really appreciate it and glad you're enjoying the stream. And yeah, it's an interesting airplane and uh, it's great to hear from people who flew on it. And it's funny you say how much you liked it. Best regional plane ever yeah and it, it's interesting because um it's very popular with pilots as well who flew this now some of them knew that it's not uh it's not necessarily the most advanced airplane but something that the pilots who flew this i often hear about is just how nice it was to fly actually hand fly um it was very popular for that it also had that nice landing if for landing so yeah pilots who flew this really liked this airplane that i met anyway so yeah it's um interesting so thanks very much michael for the donation really appreciate it John says, we are an odd bunch, us flight simmers. We have the most complex aircraft systems model, but we're not truly happy unless it's a working loo. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Rafa says, if it has no INS, IRS, and I guess no GNSS, how it gets the INF capability DME, DME, VOR, DME for position finding or something? Yeah, there you go, Rafa. Yeah, so uh, VOR, DME, and DME, DME could be the options. I need to look into the navigation system. Because, of course, the RJ was EFIS. So the RJ had electronic engine displays. They looked very much like two of those 737 panels sort of <laughs> bolted on there and had electronic displays here. But this one I, doesn't have an IRS, no. So it must be doing uh, DME, DME for the area navigation stuff. Yeah. Simon C says, when it comes to stretch versions, Aerosoft is going to release an add-on for the CRJ to include the 900-1000. However, it's going to cost another 15 euros, but it's something for the stretch fans. Yeah, there you go. The 1000 uh, CRJ would be good fun. I'd definitely, uh, definitely have a go at that. Looking forward to that one. <laughs> I9 says, why X-Plane? No, we, we, uh, we do, we've always flown X-Plane on this channel, and it's got some fantastic airliners for us to enjoy. Axman says, the C-17 has the best looking anhedral angle. There you go. Yeah. Axman says, I was on medic assess team at Edinburgh. You used to have to lift injured and disabled down the air stairs. Not fun. Ah, oh, yes. Yeah, so the uh, the air stairs on this are quite, yeah. Air stairs are always a bit <laughs> rattly and small. Uh, 
Hello, Cloud Chaser. Thanks for coming. Good stuff. So we're doing an arrival via... Uh, I've forgotten the name. We're going via Autac. I thought it was called an Autac arrival, but it's not. Um, it's going to be this. I think Jersey 1 Alpha. That's what I'm going to plan on. So we're going to go from... Let me write it down because I will forget. Autac. Then we go to Angler. And this is all based on the JSY. So then we go to the JSY. JSY frequency 112.2. Um, and we're going to go uh, 184 the whole time. So 184 southbound from Ortac. Jersey 1 Alpha towards Jersey. I'm hopefully going to be able to navigate towards the Ortac waypoint. But again, we can do it direct in here. So... I'm definitely going to use this airplane on some more complicated routes because we need RNAV working to fly into London City. Uh, or the arrival suddenly use it. We could have probably got away with it, but anyway. Um, so I'm going to set that up soon. Um, so yeah, we'll have to fly this again. Uh, then we go to Jersey. And then, let's just check their weather. Uh, I'm having trouble with this. It doesn't scroll down. Oh, it doesn't have it available. There we go. Uh, definitely then 06020 gusting 33. Oof, that would be a breezy day to go to Jersey. And we're having to do it. Yikes. Oh, it's going to be night time probably as well, just to top it all off. <laughs> That's entirely my fault. Uh, so, yeah, there's the arrival to Jersey. Um, QNH 1020. So, I'm just going to set down the standby altimeter to hopefully remind me as we get lower. 1020. So, that settles which approach we can expect. Probably the VOR, ILS DME 08. Oh, well, I don't know why I said that. It doesn't exist. It'll be the NDB, ILS DME 08. Ah, oh, that's funny. <laughs> oh, why is it done like that? Alright then, we'll be tracking an NDB. Tracking an NDB in a jet airliner is never that much fun. <laughs> um, but it looks like, for some reason, they don't bother with the VOR onto the ILS for 08, so we do the NDB. Let's tune the NDB now then. JW329. I'm going to put it on both sides so I can have as much flexibility. Very straightforward. 329. And 3, 2, no. 329. Uh, leave that in norm on ADF selected. So 329. And now. I can put the ADF up here, we're too far away of course, but that will come into range and point at it. Okay. Right. Oh, that gives us the other problem, which is we're going to arrive at the JSY VOR. Which does have a hold. Hopefully we get radar vectors, that would solve all of this, that's what I'd expect. But basically, if we do arrive at the JSY, I'm just going to fly westbound. So what I'll do is I'll enter the hold, JSY, we'll turn outbound, so we'll go JSY, outbound onto 085, a direct entry hold basically, inbound 265, towards the NDB, and then we'll take the NDB outbound, uh, we'll go for, I'm not sure if this is a Cat B airplane actually, I need to look up the speeds, it does have some slow approach speeds, at our current weight of 36 tons, VREF is only 116, look at that, pretty slow. We're going to do full flap landing, 33 degrees of flap, so that's in there. Let's check our pressurization, by the way. So we've got uh, altitude, cabin altitude of 7,000 feet, that's fine. Differential pressure of 6 psi, all looking pretty reasonable. Um, do we need to put landing elevation? I don't think we do, or I haven't spotted it if we do. No. So, good, so we'll enter the hold, go... Um, well, or we could take ourselves straight to the Juliet Whiskey and do the same, but if we went to the VOR, Enter the hold, out, NEB, out and round. So that could work. Base turn restriction is 185 knots, so we will do that. So if we have to fly this procedure, DME reads zero at the 08 threshold, so that's good. ILS DME 110.19. Uh, we will we can receive DME, so that works, and they'll uh, pass us on the equivalent. Low terrain, 900 feet, so it's quite straightforward to get into. If we have a missed approach, straight ahead at 3,000 feet, turn right to heading 180, then as directed, max 210. So we'll go to 3,000 feet, straight ahead, 180. Uh, as we pass 3,000. Won't take long to do that in this airplane. 
normal 3 degree ILS, quite a low platform altitude of 2,000 feet and the airfield is slightly raised up, it's actually 270 feet up so we're quite low so that's only a 5 mile final approach so I'll be pretty much fully configured as we pass through that. Strong headwind today though. Which says, how can you set a speed like the auto throttle of the Airbus? Just can't make it up from the manual. There's no auto thrust, I'm afraid. So let me show you what we do have. This is a thrust management system, and I can bring it up for, uh, 2D, which does help. So that's what, that's just the same as that panel. So this can engage a little bit of control over the thrust levers. So at the moment, all I'm controlling is thrust lever. Um, actually, no, it's not quite true. I've only got one throttle assigned. Anyway, at the moment it's synchronizing this to the number one engine because we've got master set to one. You could also make number engine two the master in case engine one fails. Um, it's being controlled by the N2. So it'll synchronize them to stop sort of any strange noises. If I press MCT, but I bring the thrust levers all the way back to idle, you'll see here that it gives me a blue arrow. So because I brought the thrust back too much, the thrust management system can't actually reach the thrust target. It can't engage it. So it's asking me with the blue arrow up to point the thrust levers forward. So it wants more. There we go. And now, because it have commanded MCT, it will slowly engage them and move them up towards uh, MCT thrust. It's going to take a while from there. If I move them forward a bit, it can do it. Likewise, if they're too far forward, it is possible for it to um, have a white arrow saying, please reduce the thrust. So it will when we go into our descent mode, which we're going to do shortly. So there you go. Um, no water throttle though. So now I'm in the cruise, I'm going to go to sync and I'm just going to adjust it as I see fit. And he says the stock FMC is perfectly usable, it's not perfect but it's okay. There you go. Excellent. 116, we're cat B then, yes. So we're approaching at 116, so that w I think that would be a cat B, but remember it's not based on our actual approach speed on the day, it's based on the approach speed that aircraft might end up flying. So. Once an airplane is assigned a category based on its weights and limits, that is the category it is, um, unless you change the, the certified weights. So um, whether this is actually a Cat C or B certified airplane is a good question. C will give us more room, of course. Rafa says, do you think we'll have the Avro RJ in future from Just Flight? I hope so, but I don't know. Oli T says, good evening, just finished a day's work at Heathrow, moving to Cardiff soon for a new job opportunity at Cardiff Airport. Fantastic, Oli T. Uh, I hope things are going well at Heathrow, and uh, yeah, Cardiff, we've been to Cardiff twice on the channel, lovely airport, so I hope you enjoy that, fantastic. Ross says, Glasgow, my home airport, why is the thumbnail all pixely? Hmm, that's strange, I've had a few people say that, I don't know what's happened. I, I, I did it in a normal way, but clearly it's not worked properly. Thrust system seems like the CRJ's auto throttle and advisory system. Yeah, it it's a bit more than the CRJ's because it it does take over. Oh, don't complain, airplane. It's funny. I thought we'd be running out of thrust. I mean, look at our fuel. We haven't even drained the centre tank yet. We're going to be landing with six tons on board in a minute. So the fuel planning is clearly wrong. I was going to say nine tons burn would have been insane. So we'll have to see what we burnt doing this. Aviation Ace, hope you're doing well. No problem at all. Um, yeah, we're really enjoying it. Something different. Right, we're reaching. Look at that, we're already reaching um, Southampton. I can't believe it. Here's the south coast. We need to start thinking about descending. So from Southampton, we need to take 205 for 62 miles to Ortac. So let's go heading. Let's set the 205 course. There it is. And I'm going to leave it until that gets a bit closer. I don't want the airplane to turn left and then do it. I'm going to just fly straight at the VOR, which I can see up here. What we can do is let's set up the inbound course for the RS-083. I'm going to set that on the other side just so it's ready. And I'm going to set NAV2 to the frequency 110.9. There it is. Right, we are passing right overhead. Notice the ground speed. See how the ground speed is running down to zero? That's because we're in the cone of confusion. So this will be using the DME to judge the ground speed. Yeah, how interesting. Don't see system like this very often. Right, let's come right onto the heading. Oh no, don't do that. So obviously we've gone through the radar I wanted because I've carved overhead, straight overhead the VOR like that. 
And now you see that ground speed pick up again. So yeah, DME, DME seems to be how this airplane is uh, calculating a lot of this. Vorlock. And there's the white four arms there. We're only we're still basically above that VOR. If I go to the map view, we are here. Speed bit behind us. So we've gone straight over, and now we need to head over and re-intercept that uh, radio. Just come right a little bit. Okay. Right, we might get away with uh, <laughs> getting there in time. Let's set up the minima. So, 200 feet on the rad out. Oh, no, do that. 1013, 200 feet. Ah, stop that. Here we go. We have a little radio altimeter. Quite hard to set, but there we go. 200. That will come alive as we get a bit lower. Oh, no. That was if I turn it on. I'll leave it like that. I think it was alive earlier. There we go. We've gone to VOR green, so we're now intercepting that. So now we're going to plan our navades carefully. Let us grab the ATIS. I'm not going to listen to it just because it's a bit tedious while streaming to show you guys all of that or to sit here while I listen. I can tell you they're using information X-ray. It's going to be quite a challenge, this. Uh, runway in use is 08, of course. Transition level 60. Surface wind 07021. Ooh. Cav okay, lovely day. Yeah, it's been breezy in the UK for the last few days, but lovely and clear, but just a bit cold. <laughs> Temperature 9, G.4, Q and H1021 now. Um, so let's just set that on the standby. 1021. Acknowledge sheet information X ray and advise aircraft type. Good. There we go. Wide one ball, perfect. Long dinner, but back in plenty of time. Yeah, we've seen a slow one today. <laughs> so we're going to get to Autac soon. If we go to our chart. We are up here somewhere, hopefully heading straight for it. From Autac, course 184. Got a nice fancy clock over here as well. Look at this. This is brilliant. Love it. Put the NDB on the right hand side, VOR on the left for now. And we should eventually see ourselves. There we are, cruising in towards Autac. Descent planning. I don't know. We can go very steep in this airplane. Um, we need to deploy the speed brakes manually, I think. There's no auto brakes, so brakes are manual. Uh, let's see what else we need to set up for the landing. So we'll go into our checklist. Descent, PTU will come on when we start our descent. Preservation set. Briefing complete, ice protection as required. Landing data checked. Okay, we'll do all of that. Marcel, thank you very much, Marcel, for your five pound donation. Really appreciate it. Marcel says, love your streams, full of information. You always answer questions and you are always inspiring. Thank you. You're very welcome, Marcel. That's incredibly kind. Thank you for coming along to yet another stream. I know you've been to lots of them and uh, thank you for your um, your very kind donation and for supporting the channel. Really, really appreciate it. And I hope you're having a good day and I'm glad you're enjoying the stream. Yeah, really kind of you, myself. Thank you. Let's just look ahead at these checklists. Yeah, that's all fine. Not too much to do. Quite a nice checklist, really. Again, I had to use the the, the Just Flight manual came with a tutorial flight, and that was easily the best way to learn the airplane because that took you through lots of the panels and checks. Once you got used to that, then that checklist has been really helpful. Today's the first day I've used the checklist that you guys are seeing me use. Thank you again, Marcel. Really appreciate the donation. Ah, Lauren Vita's not all throttle VNAV, I mean. Yeah, the VNAV, at the moment, I don't know how to use. <laughs> and it's that simple. I, I don't even want to comment on it. It has a VNAV button. I don't know what that's based on. Yeah, we're going to do it all in our heads today. So let's think about it. As we get to Autac, we have 18, so let's make it 30. So we're about 50 miles to the JSY. Um, we're at 27,000 feet, so we need... Uh, what do we need? We need 81, plus a little bit to slow down. So we need about 90 miles to descend from here. 90 miles should, which should keep us reasonable. From Autac, we have 30, 40, 50. 
60, 70. So. 50, 60, 70. Yeah, so actually, given that they might take us from Ortec and head us straight out onto a base leg and vector us in, about 20 miles before Ortec we need to descend. Or think about descending anyway. However, this airplane, I, I think, descends pretty well. It's got four engines for drag. It's got massive speed brake at the back, which we'll have to try out. Uh, but anyway, Ortac is uh, 62 miles on the DME. So, in theory, we would descend any time now. But I might just wait because I reckon we can dive down. I quite like testing out the dive performance of these airplanes. It's useful to, to see uh, how, how, how sticky of a situation you can recover yourself from. That is indeed TCAS, Mike. Yeah, you can change that if you want to TCAS. You press this. You can also change the livery in flight. I haven't seen that before, but it's pretty cool. It does work. I'm not going to do it today because we are obviously very proudly flying our Jersey European. British European flag. Sorry. Flyby, of course, rebranding. Fly British European. It used to be Jersey European. Um, so they... they Wanted to expand a little bit into the regional markets, not just Jersey. <laughs> Mikhail says, "What's the hardest approach you've flown in real life?" It's a, yeah, yeah. Thanks. I I I have flown into London City. That's quite a challenge. On some days. <laughs> Aviation A says, when I first started to see just like BAE 146 for X-Plane vids on people's channels, I got so excited because it means the plane is coming soon. The 146 is my absolute favorite plane. It is coming very soon, Aviation A. So hopefully um, later this week. Hopefully, but that's not guaranteed, I'm afraid. Loads of liveries included. Uh, and, uh, one of the best livery packages I've seen, um, which is really great because it means you don't have to wait around. It's just all in there and they're all done to a really nice quality. Yeah. Some pretty cool ones as well. Some Australian Airlines, some American Airlines. You've got the test liveries. You've got the Royal liveries. There's the military variants with the uh, missile, not not missile pods. What are they called? Anti countermeasure pods. Yeah, some cool things. Cool, cool things. Michael Hall says, hey, uh, I was just wondering, how do you calculate the flex to take off temp in the 320 in real world flights? Loving the stream. We'll have a third party software, so there'll be an app even an Airbus app on like an iPad or a tablet computer. Yeah, the airplane doesn't calculate it itself. We do it We do it through a different process. Yeah, we can also calculate it using performance charts, but that's a whole complicated thing to describe over a stream, especially without the charts in front of you. But basically, we have paper charts where we and big tables of data, and we can calculate it from those using a technique that we get taught. Yeah. Lauren V, correct. London City was not in a 320. <laughs> Ollie says, I recommend doing an approach into Aosta Airport in the Italian Alps. Very challenging, and the 146 is the largest aircraft that's ever landed there. Ooh, that sounds fun. And this is why this plane was designed, you know, to get into these little airports that perhaps regional jets couldn't before. So it's got good performance with the four engines, plus lots of seats, because it's that, that wide fuselage. So you can see why they did it. It does make more sense than it might at first appear to. Come on, I want to land while it's still daylight. <laughs> we might struggle screaming along I'm going to go diving down as fast as I can RJ85 is approach cat C can't find a reference for the 146-300 so the RJ85 I believe was the RJ version of the 300 so we'll go with cat C I think that's right okay I think we're pretty much ready to go we're going to do a few things and I just need to let me just check the guide. I have the guide sitting next to me, and it does talk about... Do, 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 stand by. It does tell you what to do for the descent with the thrust, and that's what I'm a little bit unfamiliar with. So we're going to tune our frequencies. They use vertical speed for the descent, so we shall see what we're going to use. We can use their vertical speed, or we could use... Um, IS, I believe. In the dash, we used to use vertical speed for descending because the IS mode didn't work. And I believe Matthew Presley said the CRJ is the same. So 
I don't know about this one. Here we go then. Time to dive down into Jersey. One, two, five, two. Oh, it's going back down. Jersey, good evening. Jersey 271, flight level 270 to Ortac, uh, BA146 with uh, X-ray. Six zero eight, left turn, heading one one zero degrees, clear to house approach from ways. In fact, we've gone through Ortac. <laughs> oh dear. Jersey 271, Jersey Control, good evening. Jersey 1, Golf arrival, land the runway 08, descend flight level 80. Ten five five eight zero Jersey one Golf four zero eight Jersey two seven one. Alitalia two two Golf descent altitude three thousand feet. Ah, uh, Jersey one Jersey Golf. Golf. Where's that gone? Right air three nine Charlie descent altitude four thousand. Well, I know I'm getting high. Let's get the descent going to eight zero. Must be the other non IF arrival, perhaps. So eight zero. Now let's do what we said. So let's go to IS, and then I'm going to engage. Des. Jersey two seven one speed two four zero knots or less. Two forty or less, Jersey two seven one. Two forty knots or less. And now let's check that the sense working. So there we go. Yep, yeah, that's working absolutely fine. Let's just see the, the approach. I wish it didn't say arrival and approach. I do find that difficult. Jersey one golf. There you go. So we need to go to Alderney three eight three. He'll be getting annoyed at us in a second for our terrible planning. Let's go ADF there. And we're going well, to go screaming past that. Now it's the 196 to that point. Okay. Oof, this is going to be challenging. So we need to track outbound from Alderney 196. I'm going to put the course on 196 to remind me of that. But we're going to have to do it all with the heading bug using this needle here. So we're just going past Alderney now. So let's let that settle up a little bit. I can cheat slightly over here. So that's all neat. That's taking us to Oyster. Which is based off the Jersey VOR. So 1122. Let's bring that up. So I need 1122. So I believe the reason we put this into descent is to make sure we get the minimum RPMs to account for things like packs and so on and air conditioning otherwise engines could be a bit underpowered I don't know if there is an Airbus E-Fan X livery good question Aviation Ace I need to have a look I haven't seen it most of the liveries are realistic and there's a white one a blank one that is available alright let's bring up the 2D panel that's going to be a big help now so I need to be on the 196 again tracking tutorial is available Tracking NDPs is just unpleasant <laughs> in these airplanes. So we're diving down. He's at 240 knots or less. So we're in IS mode. So how do we do that? Let's do control wheel steering and pull the nose up gently. The passengers do scream in this like they do in the flight factor. Jersey 271, right turn heading 270 degrees. I'll give you vectors now for the ILS runway 08. Right heading 270 degrees, Jersey 271. Thank you. He has seen us struggling. That was a big heading change though. Um, I'll just check that heading with him. But yeah, anyway, so we were, we were going to eventually have to bring this ADF needle round to the left until we were on that radio. <laughs> right, speed, that's 250. Put up a bit more, get the speed back. So you have to hold the control with steering while the nose is coming up. There's 240. Uh, Jersey 271. Can you confirm our heading, please? Sorry. Yep, two seven, uh, Jersey 271. Right turn. Heading 270 degrees. Heading 270, Jersey 271. Okay, we'll keep the power back. That's all working out. Hey, SB, thanks for coming along. Right, so I need that NDB set. So let's keep the 329. I'm going to put the 329 on both sides. One, two, three, two, nine. So we've got the NDB. 
which we will need to fly this. It's an NDB ILS after all. Now I need the ILS as well. 1109. So he said we're going to vector, get vectored, so I think it's safe to set that now. No point hanging around. 1109. And course 083. So you can just click and hold to make it do these large chunks. So 083. So there we go. ILS. Course 083. ILS. 083. Says 23 miles. So Jersey's probably 23 miles off to our left. Or should be about right. It's down there. This is uh, Guernsey, another little airport. There it is, quite nice scenery for Guernsey. X plane often looks its best about now, I think. Uh, let's put the AC pumps on just in case, PTU on because we forgot it last time. And let's do the descent. PTU on, preservation set, briefing complete, ice protection, landing data. Let's check that data again. Flat 33, 116. So I think we need to add 5 because that is the V ref, but our V approach will be a little bit faster. So I'll set 116. So let's set 120. Speed bugging up. Oh, there you go. You'll notice as well, there's this little F and S. This is a system you used to see on the. Um, you used to see this on the uh, original 757s, just a fast and slow scale. Instead of, you, you guys know I've modified mine to say, uh, on my 757, I have the speed tape here. But yeah, this one has the fast and slow, just like it did on the 75. I'm going to start adding the thrust. Because we've got a fair way to go now. <laughs> That's my fault. He's, a, he's probably doing that because we were just getting in the way of right, terrible nine, tracking. So if I add the power now, remember we're in IS mode. Oh, the first officer's joining us. Hello. I confirm left heading 180 degrees, Jersey 271. Left heading 180 degrees, Jersey 271. Now it's worth checking. Sorry, just to confirm, uh, would you want us left or right to heading 180? Thanks, left heading 180, Jersey 271. Jersey 875, right turn heading 25. Yeah, it's worth checking because he might have wanted us to go right just to give more track miles to put us by another airplane. So it'd be a big right turn round. It does happen. But they usually, if our traffic controllers mean that, they usually say right, right, something like that. They'll repeat it, make it very clear that that's what they want. So that's why I thought I'd better check <laughs> instead of doing it and upsetting him. Right, we're down below 10,000 feet. Let's get those landing lights on. Oh, we're getting towards 10,000 feet anyway. 30 miles out. Keep that descent gentle. I might go into vertical. Mm -hmm. No, I'll keep IS. Jersey approach. Good evening, Golf Bravo. November Romeo Golf level. Uh, flight level 70. Apologies. Tired and coming off. Norwich, what about Charlie? Golf Romeo Golf. No, Charlie. Golf Romeo Golf. Aviation Forever says, Are you allowed to have brakes while on Unicom? Yeah. I do. <laughs> I think on Unicom that's fair enough. As long as you're not away for too long. Correct. Well, not going to take us long now. Hopefully, we'll see some more indications appear to show us the RS is working. 1109. One zero nine. By the way. Let's show you the landing, airport, there it is, short runway, problems here, we need to get off safely, so, send 4,000 feet, QNH1020, Jersey 271, so we need to get ourselves safely down in the touchdown zone, we can't focus on floating the landing, sadly, to get a soft uh, readout on our overlay, it won't matter, we just need to safely get it down, get the nose up. Something I've noticed with this airplane is it, it can be pretty nose down, so you do have to um, set the QNH. You do have to put a bit of effort to keep the thrust back and get that nose up. Yeah. 
And I might even use a little bit of speed brake on final. I'm not sure if they did. In London City, they used the speed brake on final approach, as you guys would have seen. Look at that. Isn't that funny? What an interesting speed brake. Um, but I don't know if they did that for normal landings. Right, we're 24 miles away. That's fine. So from 10,000 feet, we'd have no trouble descending an idle thrust to make up our height because we are a little bit high. Aviation Aces, are you looking forward to the Toast A340? I am indeed, very much so. Theme Park Crazy, we're landing very soon. Right, there's 10,000 feet, landing lights are on. Oh, we didn't. Poor passengers. <laughs> no, we do that. <laughs> Otherwise, we're pretty much ready. Still no localised indication. 180 knots, Jersey 271. Oh, it's getting tricky. So now it's probably going to be easier, instead of constantly using controls during vertical speed. We've got thrust back to idle. And now it's going to be 500 feet per minute. The speed will reduce. We're doing 180 knots, we've been asked for. So. Now, in terms of minimum speeds, different weights, I'm not entirely sure. I'm imagining these speeds, 178. So 180 knots, I might put out 18 degrees of flat. It might be quite nice for us as well to hear the... Uh, Jersey 271, descend altitude 3,000 feet. Send 3,000 feet, Jersey 271. Might be nice for us to hear the, the how. Jersey 875, left turn heading 110 degrees, cleared island approach from 08. Okay, we are now getting high. Trying to get the speed back to 180. Once the speed is back at 180, I'm going to increase that vertical speed. I wish it had a vertical speed wheel. That would be so much nicer than having to do this. I have a horrible feeling we're going to go through the low centre line here. Unless he intercepts us from here. Left heading 130 degrees, Jersey 271. 130. Right, let's get that speed break out. We are definitely high. There's 180 knots. Let's lower the nose. Get that vertical speed up. In fact, I can do IS again now. Let's do IS. I don't want it to slow down anymore. And then setting 130. Speed break is out. So, the glide slip's alive beneath us, which makes sense. Let's get. Uh, we'll leave the flaps in for now. I'm still 22 miles out. So we're doing a bit of a dive with those speed brakes out. Let's see how this works. We have got the gear if we need it. There's Jersey over there. So speed is safe. There's a localizer coming to life. He hasn't cleared us, but I'm going to just ask. Uh, Jersey 271, are we cleared for the ILS? Oh, Roger, Jersey 271. Um, are we clear for the localizer? Uh, continue on your present heading. I'll give you vectors from the south. If that's okay. Copy. Uh, continue present heading, Jersey 271. So we can easily make it. We've made sure we can make it. Our speed is back. and Now we're below the glide slope. So no problem at all. However, he may have other reasons that he doesn't... Jersey 271, left turn heading 080 degrees. Left heading 080 degrees, Jersey 271. He may have other reasons. It could be airspace, it could be traffic beneath us, above us, something like that. So um, it's not for us to decide <laughs> that we're definitely okay to do it. So there we go. We're below the glide slope now. Speed's back comfortably. I mean, we're actually a bit slow even. We're 160. He wanted us below 180. So I'm going to put the first stage of flap out. Just because that if you look, the pitch is already up. And now you'll hear that howl. I don't know how audible it was from the flight deck. Let's get a power on. And we're still descending in IS. I don't like IS anymore. Logan Ford, speed Vertical one speed one again. Speed one eight, Logan Ford, one eight, and now I've got to remember to keep the power up. It does slow down. Those flaps are just so big. I, unbelievably big. And the amount of drag you get from them. And hopefully you can hear that howl. It's a cool sound, isn't it? 
Jersey 271, minimum of approach speed until 4D, mate, please. Minimum approach speed to 4D, Jersey 271. Local 4 Delta Juliet, right, sir. Right, he wants us to slow down, then that's going to be an awkward one. We said 120 knots. Speed's coming back. That basically means we have to put the gear out as well, even though we're 16 miles away. It's a bit, a bit of a shame, but that's that's how he wants it. Nothing we can do about that. So let's go to flaps 24. There we are. Massive great flaps, loads of drag, so we'll get the power on. Double slotted, it looks like, as well. So we're probably one of the slowest airliners out here. We can come all the way back to 120, so he should be pretty pleased with that. Just to make sure. But I'm going to have to put the gear down. If I don't put the gear down, in fact, let's try it out. You'll get the gear horn when the next stage of flap comes out and the power comes back. Let's go flaps 30, and there's the gear horn. So we'll just have to put that down. See how we're reaching that glide set now? So I need to increase that vertical speed. Let's get the nose down a bit. Jersey 271, left turn heading 050 degrees, clear dialysis approach from way 08. Left heading 050, clear dialysis 08, Jersey 271. 050, let's do VOR lock and GSL for glide slope. Those are now white and armed. Speed is back at 120. But, uh, but it should be about 500, should just about work out. Don't let's get slow now. Keep the speed up. A bit turbulent now. Flaps going to full. Ah, let's set the bug at 120. There we go. It's a bit better. Now that, see how that aligns with the fast, slow logo there. So this should work out. Localizer should come alive in a second. There you go, glide step and localizer are alive. Let's synchronize the bug with the approach, in case we need to go around. And let's put 3,000 feet in the window, which we have. And now, now I get a nice big picture if I'm fast or slow, so a little bit fast, no problem there. I don't want to be too fast, just because I, I need, do need to be at that VRF. I mean, I'm imagining we could be over max landing weight. We've got so much fuel on board, look at that. Seven tons, so that, yeah. That sim brief was a bit wrong. <laughs> Okay, we're on final approach then. We've Jersey 271, speed 180 until 4D. At Jersey 27, we've fully configured back to final approach speed. Would you like us to accelerate? If that's possible, if not, don't worry. Okay, we'll do our best uh, and then we'll slow down again, uh, but we won't be able to do 180 to 4. Sorry, Jersey 271. That's okay, thank you very much. Okay, he wants to speed up. I'm going to. One one nine four five Jesse two seven one. Goodbye. Thanks for help. One one nine four five. Okay, there's tower. I'm just bringing the flaps in one stage. I'm running up power. Uh, now flat limiting speeds. I'm not entirely sure. But uh, yeah, we can do this. We're still 10 miles out, so let's keep the speed up. Now, that's not our fault. Air traffic control did ask us to speed up. So I'm being a bit flexible here. In real life, I'd probably say no. We're going to stay at our final approach speed because retracting flaps is a challenging thing to do. But we want to help everyone out here. <laughs> also, we get to enjoy the howl a bit more. But yeah, this is not what you're doing in a real airplane. Very uncomfortable. And changing the configuration in the wrong direction is just too risky. Not worth it. Tower Jersey 271, RLS runway 08, 9 miles. Jersey 271, very good evening, sir. Continue number 2 at present, minimums if possible. Okay, continue approach and we'll reduce to minimum speed, Jersey 271. Right. <laughs> Idle thrusts. Jersey 16, Charlie Hotel, uh, ready for push. Flaps to 30 again. <laughs> Jersey 16 Charlie Hotel pushing start up to face west school for taxi. And flaps to <laughs> full. Yeah, it sounds like the Pratt and Whitney's, but it's not. It, that howl is just the flaps. Yeah, they sort of resonate. That is a bumpy day. So this landing, guys, we just need touchdown zone, right speed, um, and get it stopped. We're not looking for smooth today because it's going to be really breezy, really turbulent. There's 120 coming in. So sadly, there's no way to make the thrust management system fly the approach speed. I wish there was. 
So we're going to have to keep an eye on that. Luckily, this indicator up here is going to be our best clue. Gear is down. Flaps fully configured. We're going to do manual braking. And the thing I need to remember is I need to get get the thrust back and make sure I can get the nose up. Go fast, go slow, go fast, go slow, go fast. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah it's unusual. Air traffic control normally don't do that. <laughs> but they've all been very nice about it. The other controller did say you don't have to, so I made my workload higher by uh, by accepting something I knew I didn't need to do. <laughs> there we go. That's a bit of a normal landing attitude. So there's someone behind us over there. Sun setting. Lovely. Oh, that's even screenshot worthy. So we've got the power set about right. So it's taking, look at that, 62%. A bit more maybe. Jesse, same sort of butter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, not today, I'm certain. <laughs> yeah, right, so I'm just trying to remind myself. I haven't done, no, oh, excuses before a thousand feet, uh, which we are, as you can prove on the radio altimeter, we're still at 1800 feet. <laughs> um, excuses are, I haven't flown to 300 much, so it's a bit of a mystery to me. Danny Robel, thank you so much for your $3 donation. Really appreciate it, Danny. Danny says, good landing, Captain. Thanks, Danny. We'll see how it goes. Thanks you for the donation. Thank you for so kindly supporting the channel so much as well. Really appreciate it. So there's traffic departing in front of us. I really don't want to go around because my dinner's ready. There's all the traffic landing on the airport. That's great. Speed's crept up. So that 120 seems to be working with a nice nose attitude. No reverses on this airplane either. So we need to deploy the spoilers ourselves. And as far as I'm aware, I'm going to have to deploy them like this. And then also, after landing... Pull in the final bit. Oh, speed's crept up there. Our oh, ground speed, yeah, 107. Doesn't surprise me. Good 20 knot headwind. Oh, nipping, amazing. Hey, firm. Final approach, Jersey 271. Clear to land, 08, Jersey 271. Good luck to us then. It's breezy. I'm not sure if I missed the call from him. But there we go. Speed's a bit high. <laughs> I wonder what Logan's flying. I hope it's pretty small and it's pretty slow. Because we have a ridiculously slow approach speed. What's the QC and QT like? Aviation Aces? Yeah, they're all included. If you look at my last video, I show a little bit of it. But yeah, they've modelled. They've got the, uh, the QC and QT, the cargo variants and the convertible variants. But yeah, right, let's go. Autopilot off. Feels like we're barely moving out the window. Let's get the mouse out of the way. Wow, the autopilot was doing a good job. I'm doing a much worse job. <laughs> so a bit more power needed. That is really turbulent today. My goodness. Wow. Let me show you the yoke. <laughs> this airplane needs a bit of manoeuvring, that's for sure. So that this in the real Jersey, this cliff face here causes problems with winds like this because the wind comes over the island and then just sinks down on the other side. A bit fast now. We don't want to be fast. Are we going to float down the entire runway? Go on, go left. Minimums. There's minimums. Visual, obviously. Bit of sink there. Okay. Bit of idle, bit of left rudder. There's a touchdown. That's going to be a bit of a heavy one, <laughs> but we'll take it. Get ourselves down. Vacate right when able, Jersey 271. Okay, standing on the brakes. I think we're going to make this exit no problem. Goodness me, that was rough as anything. <laughs> okay, let's get ourselves off to the right. Let the other airplane land. And we've made it, so welcome. And you see how... Those ground spoilers don't deploy. There we go. I needed to deploy them myself. And then they seem to stow again. I'm not entirely sure. I need to work this ground spoiler system out. It's quite different. <laughs> Didn't have time to think about any of that. Just needed to get it on the ground. <laughs> so, let's go and park up. 
Right, there we go. Fantastic. So thank you all for coming along. Welcome to a rather windy jersey. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you, Vati2, for your five pound donation. Really appreciate it. Vati2 says their pack will be fine. There we go. <laughs> yeah, those are some interesting wins. Yeah, I haven't seen that in X-Plane before. It's quite good when it does that. Right, they came to the runway. We're going to do a few things, like put the taxi lights on. Nope, don't want to do that. Six Hotel. Send the strobe lights off. Okay, so that was, yeah, great fun. Thank you guys for coming along. I hope you've enjoyed it. John says, on the ground, nicely done in the horrible wind. Got to go for my dinner now, but thanks for streaming. You're welcome. Thanks for coming along. Thanks, Eboss. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Aviation Ace. Um, and guys, I have a problem today. I'm running out of time. This has run on more than I thought. So, uh, I am now going to disconnect from Vatsim, but thank you all for those of you who flew along, and thanks to our traffic control. So I'm just going to hold here, and we're going to disconnect. Uh, but I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Thanks, Marcel. Glad you enjoyed it. Um, and yeah, what we're going to do is... I hate to do this to a traffic control. They've been so good. We might just tell this controller. Because I need to go and do the replay, and then we'll get going. Juliet 0, 0, 0, gusting 3-3. That is breezy, yeah. You get some serious turbulence here. Thanks, Giuseppe. Thanks for coming along. That was an exciting approach. Okay, we're going to have to disconnect. Sorry, controller. Uh, if the controller does see this, thank you so much for looking after us uh, and doing a great job with so many traffic on the ground. Um, but it's just purely my bad timing means I need to disconnect. So that's done. And now let's do a quick look at the replay. We have to have the replay, obviously. So here we go. Look at that. Outrageous rocking and rolling around. Let's go to... And you'll see the spoilers didn't deploy because I think it has to be done manually. So into the flare. Oof. Yeah, pretty impressive uh, even even for that <laughs> that view <laughs> that's what this plane's built for as somebody said built like a tank that's that's exactly it oh oh why does it do this it's always annoying <laughs> oh dear the more more haste less speed very much true here okay there we go Let's get ourselves out. So we actually, we were quite early on in the touchdown zone, but if you draw out the flare in strong winds like this, you can get yourselves into trouble. It's not a very responsive plane on final. That's something I did feel. So there was the flare. Still wobbling. I was having to use quite a lot of aileron. But we did get it there. Into the flare. Look at those landing gears soaking it up. They're so nice. They make such a difference. And yeah, the spoilers didn't deploy or the, the speed break. Daniel Pedersen, thanks so much for your 50 state donation. Really appreciate it. Glad you enjoyed the stream. Thank you for coming along. I hope you're doing well. Um, yeah, windy, windy, windy. So, of course, it is replay time. So we'll get a passenger view of it rocking and rolling. Let me get the music up. And there you go, 65 feet minute in the reverse. <laughs> um, and I'm going to say to you guys, thanks so much for coming along. I've really enjoyed it. I hope you've enjoyed it. This airplane coming soon, really good fun. I've been enjoying it a lot, but you know, it, it, it's it's also you're not got an FMC yet and so on. So uh, yeah, it's um, it's an interesting one. But uh, yeah, let's leave that playing there. Hopefully that's not too far. No, that should be good. And I'm going to say thank you for coming along. Thanks to the moderators. Thanks for the people who've kindly donated. Really appreciate it. And uh, we'll be having more Airbus guides on the channel soon. More tutorials, more live streams, of course, back in the Airbus soon enough. I know we've done a lot of other airplanes recently. But I'm going to uh, say, yeah, thank you so much. Keep safe and well. And we'll see you again uh, in another video or live stream soon. Have a good evening. Bye-bye.